Hello everyone, and welcome to Muse Fanfiction, so we are back with an interesting and brand new movie on what if Naruto awoke the nine bloodlines of ancient power. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. Betted. Okay, it is time for another attempt at a story, my first Naruto FIC. Recommendations are always wanted. There will be bashing of Sasuke and the Pink Banshee. Sakura, as well as well, generally everyone in Konoha who isn't a ninja and or decent. AKA, while I keep Kiba, Kakashi and the Sandame Hokage good and not bashed, the civilian council and the old birds Homura and Kaharu, expect also Danzo and the ever-changing Mrs. Haruno to also be ridiculed. The Land of Waves, Chizuna's House. In the dark of night, a loud sound was heard, possibly louder than the screams of the entire Haruno family. It was the snoring of one Uzumaki Naruto. The whiskered blonde was fast asleep, recovering from an earlier scuffle with a most mysterious missing nin, while downstairs things were far from perfect. Shut the dobi up, a Uchiha can't nor will sleep in these conditions. One arrogant prick by the name of Uchiha Sasuke, a duck-haired black-haired kid with severe issues, complained to their sensei, a silver-haired masked ninja of the Jonin rank, by the name of Hitaki Kakashi. The masked man sighed, listening to the boy rant through his locked door, luckily for the noise level the pink-haired one was asleep as well. A. N. I know that the guy should be too tired to move around at this point, but this is my story, so he just recovered quicker than in the anime or manga. He hadn't really wanted to teach anyway. Kakashi saw himself as more of a lone operative, he worked the best alone. The few friends he had, had died in battle beside him, his sensei, who happened to be the so-called Dobie's father, not that anyone aside from a few knew that, Obito San Rin Chan, did that leave guy his best friend. Sometimes, the silver-haired man had to wonder if he had a curse that killed all those who were close to him. That was the point he argued with trying to get out of teaching in the first place. Flashback, Hokage's office, the day after the rookie nine graduated. Hitaki San, you must train Uchiha Sama, he needs the jutsu in your arsenal, more than any other genin, and other. Dot dot quote, Homura, an old man who for some reason was still considered an active ninja, and his sidekick, a evil granny who looked like the mother of some sort of evil toad virgin aunt a n, Harry Potter fans may know another of this description, called Dolores Umbridge named Kaharu, actively demanded the masked nin, with fellow future mentors Yuhi Kuranai and Sarutobi Asuma, along with ninja parents Hayuga Hiyashi, Inazuka Sum, Akamichi Chuza, Nara Shikaku and Aburame Shibi. The Sandame Hokage, an old, still tan-skinned man by the name of Serutobi Hiruzen, coughed to interrupt the current conversation. And by other, you mean Naruto-kun, who despite being labeled a, dead last, managed to defeat a chunin and master a jonin level technique, the Hokage took a blow of his pipe crossly. He cared a lot for the spunky little Jinchuriki, and couldn't help but wonder, if Naruto was able to learn a technique like that so quickly, yet fail his exams. He decided to ask to put someone on it, he and Aruka-kun from the academy always had a bad feeling some of the instructors may have sabotaged Naruto's lessons. In fact they had managed to catch a former janitor of the academy attempt to break Naruto's chair in the classroom, though the man admitted that others were with him in the anti-Naruto plan, courtesy of some persuasion. Via Anko and Ibiki, he managed to pull the civilian council to his side, and he had to have the janitor go before they could get names. That wasn't saying he couldn't fire him, though. Homura-sama, I hear what you say, and while you have a point or two, I'm not going to train him. Bad luck follows me, the kind of luck that kills, that and I have more important things to do with my time. Besides, the boy's attitude was detesting, but he couldn't bring that up without the old bats telling him that the boy was merely suffering from trauma. Yeah, no way in hell that was true, he was just a spoiled brat. So, other than the, all important, Uchiha, can we actually get something done? Hiyashi sighed, like organizing the new genin. Now, while Hiyashi may appear to dislike Hinata, he does care, slightly. While he was no dad of the year, he did have an interest in who would be on his daughter's team. The team after all, had to push her to improve and protect her unmarked by Akugan Dujutsu Kekai Jenke. Hiyashi-san has a point, we already know one team, the new Inoshika Cho team, 
Mateem, Asuma grinned while smoking his trademark cigarette. While normally this would induce a complaint from Soom for her sensitive nose, Shibi for its health issues to his bugs, and the old bats, they decided not to, in the hope that the smoke shortens the two advisors' lifespan. That leaves Inazuka Kiba, Abarame Shino, Hayuga Hanada, Haruno Sakura, Uchiha Sasuke, and Uzumaki Naruto. Do we really need to teach, that boy anything, Kaharu snapped, that boy is too dangerous, idiotic, irresponsible, immature. He's a teenager, that sort of comes with the territory, Shikaku sighed, it's troublesome, but we all were like that, heck even my boy acts like that, sometimes. And after all, we have to take on any genin who manages to pass the academy, and the test that follows, Shibi stated in his monotone, causing the elders to pale. After all, they helped the civilian council pass that law, after all, to give the civilians more ninja from their way of life into the armed forces, thus increasing their overall influence. And as to his immaturity, perhaps being teamed with my son could possibly help him mature. Or, the thing inside him will kill off all your insects, with its de, the Hokage coughed to cut off Homura. Shibi didn't flinch, he knew quite well his son was safe from the chakra that the Jinchuriki could possibly give off, for unlike the old badgers, he and the rest of the parents here met the boy once or twice, and knew he was not a monster. Actually, I think that that setup might work, with my daughter, Hanada, on the team, as well, Hiyashi mentioned, surprising everyone. Ha, huh, Chuza grunted, this is new and troublesome. What was in my water this morning? Soon said to herself, going off what Shibi-san said, if my daughter was placed on his team, perhaps some of his drive might pass to her. At the minimum, even the most basic of Byakugan could tell if his tenant's chakra was getting loose or influencing him. Hiyashi led off a rare grin, the council had a betting pool for who was able to best beat or mess with the idiots on the elder and civilian council each meeting, and it looks like the three free hot spring coupons were all his. Actually, we of the elder council had talked it over, and we decided that Inazuka Kiba would provide the same sort of inspiration to your daughter, Hiyashi san, Kaharu smiled evilly. Inside, Hiyashi was cursing, now he couldn't get those tickets without insulting Soom, last time he did that the Hyuga compound smelled like dog piss for a month. No one noticed that Kakashi was smirking. So, then it looks like Kurenai-chan has Inazuka Kiba, Hyuga Hinata and Abarame Shino, so I guess that means that Haruno Sakura, Uchiha Sasuke and Uzumaki Naruto are on my team, the Jonin smirked. The resulting scream of fury from the elders shook several window frames, and one masked Jonin got himself three hot spring coupons and was treated to a night of fine drinking with Soom and the former Ino Shika Cho, on their tab of course. End flashback. Kakashi quickly came to a conclusion after that, teaching sucked. He was actually expected to be on time and had to deal with whining from all three of them. Though seeing Sasuke getting clawed by Tora was a good chuckle. Kakashi quickly decided that Naruto was his favorite among the three. While Sakura was virtually useless, and Sasuke an arrogant prick who expected Kakashi to teach him all his jutsu and strutted around like royalty, Naruto was willing to learn, and most importantly, he had humility, well more than the others anyway. Naruto didn't have anything handed to him like his teammates, and knew how to respond to failure, by getting back up and improving himself. Kakashi saw that with how his failure with the demon brothers, led to his desire to better himself, which led to his shocking show of skill in fighting Momoichi Zabuza. If the boy could use such skill with only two jutsu really at his disposal, with only a little help from Sasuke, the boy could be just as great as his own sensei, Namikaze Minato, the Yandaimi Hokage. Of course, the boy needed to pick up a few more jutsu first, and improve on his taijutsu, and chakra control, and perhaps see if he could use genjutsu. What did they teach him at the academy, anyway? The boy's taijutsu left too many weak spots, and he could barely spell genjutsu, let only do it. His chakra control was abysmal, Pakun could use a jutsu better than the boy, if the kayubi wasn't in him, he'd be in a lot of trouble. As his lack of taijutsu nearly cost them. Flashback, wave country. The group, weary from their last battle with the swordsman Zabuza, who was killed by the Kiri hunter Ninboy, though Naruto was still adamant he though the Nin was female, and Tazuna seemed to agree with him about his, her gender, with their exhausted sensei being carried by the knucklehead and brooder, before Sakura yelped, loudly to get the other's attention. 
Sasuke kun, Kakashi sensei, Baka. Standing before them was a new ninja. This ninja was wearing ragged brown robes that covered his face, with no visible height. In fact, all they could tell was this ninja was male. Ah, so Zabuza Chan was defeated by a bunch of brats and a dead weight ninja, eh. No matter, it appears I have to kill the bridge builder now. We won't let you, Dadbeo. Naruto yelled, before dropping Kakashi. Their sensei then flattened Sasuke, before the Uchiha pushed the unconscious man off, as Tazuna backed away slowly. Dobi, how dare you drop such a weight on an elite? Naruto ignored him. Yeah, Baka, how dare you try to flatten Sasuke-kun? The ever-faithful pink-haired bitch added in. Naruto flinched in pain at that remark, before turning back towards their strange enemy. Humph, what pathetic teamwork, this won't be worth the chakra. Beast wave palm, the mysterious ninja sliced his hand, which was coated in blue chakra, as a shockwave of wind energized chakra flew at the genin. Sasuke and Sakura jumped out of the way, the jutsu would have instead continued and struck Tazuna and Kakashi, but Naruto, before jumping, did everyone's favorite hand seal. Shadow clone jutsu, a shadow clone appeared where Naruto was a second ago, taking the strike and bursting into smoke. This move was witnessed by the so-called out cold Kakashi, who made a mental note to punish the others later. Not being undone, Sasuke did a series of hand signs, before ending on a tiger seal. Fire release. Great fireball technique. A large ball of fire flew from the mouth of the Uchiha and flew straight at their foe. The foe calmly did the hand signs bird, boar and serpent. Water release. Bubble barrier. The ninja let out a burst of bubbles from his mouth, which formed into a wall that took the fireball head on and negated it entirely. Shit, Sasuke grumbled as Sakura charged at the ninja with a fury, a kunai in hand. Time to prove myself worthy of Sasuke-kun, a ninja who plays with bubbles is no match for, she was thinking before the ninja did hair, monkey, horse and rat. Genjutsu, Zora's illusion of darkness. Sakura suddenly dropped her kunai and fell to the ground, twitching. However, no one noticed her nose bleed. Sasuke-kun, oh, 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 Sakura ch, Naruto said, before finding himself unable to call her that, before he created a series of shadow clones who charged at the Rouge Ninja. The ninja quickly put together the hand signs Dragon and Tiger. Foolish, wind release, hurricane gust. The ninja inhaled deeply before letting out a gust of high-powered wind that blew away about all of the shadow clones, before he heard a crunch in the leaves. Turning, he saw to his shock two shadow clones coming at him from behind. Little Brad must have used those clones as a distraction, impressive. Get out of my way, Dobie, fire release, great fireball technique. Out of nowhere, a huge fireball flew and consumed the shadow clones and flew at the rouge. Tem, you ruined my plan. Naruto yelled, so what, as a Uchiha, my plans are naturally better, Dobi, the still immobile Kakashi was fuming now. That boy was getting trialed when they got back. Actually, those shadow clones were more likely to succeed than your pathetic fireball, water release, gunshot. A burst of water flew from the ninja's mouth, followed by several more. The fireball was hollowed out to resemble a flaming donut before it faded as the water bullets flew into the woods, before bursting and sending Naruto and Sasuke flying into the air. The Uchiha hit the ground, as did Naruto a second later, before he burst into smoke. What, another shadow clone? The Rouge Ninja gasped before he suddenly felt a kunai approach him. He barely managed to avoid the weapon, as dozens more flew at him. The ninja managed to avoid being turned to Swiss cheese, but one still managed to embed itself into his right leg. Rag, ha, a dozen Naruto's flew from the woods, all tossing more kunai at their foe, surrounding the ninja. The ninja, with his injury, barely avoided getting any more, before he closed his eyes, and wet his lips with saliva, as if to test the wind. A second later, his eyes shot open, before he jumped with his good leg and flew at the Naruto who happened to be real. Nice strategy, Genin, I'll give you credit, you're the only one here not out cold who should even be a ninja but I'm afraid that things end here and now, he rapidly did snake, tiger, ox, dragon, rat and dog, before his hand glowed gold. Hidden Sealing Jutsu Hawa Fuyo Shiru, Ketsuki no Saigon no Kopi 
he harshly slammed his hand into Naruto's stomach, causing the boy's eyes to grow wide, before he fell unconscious, the clones poofing away with shocked expressions as well. It was at this point that Kakashi managed to force himself up. Summoning Jutsu, Kakashi quickly hit the ground and summoned his Ninkan pack, who quickly charged at the injured ninja, with plans of ripping flesh. Sorry, copy ninja, but I have other places to be. The ninja was about to be bit by bull, before he substituted with a random stick. Kakashi would have pursued him, but he was too injured to do so, so he leaned on Tazuna for support, as the old man carried the surprisingly light blonde, while he left his dogs to drag the disgraces. End flashback. Kakashi had confined the two others in their rooms as soon as they arrived at Tazuna's house, the doors and windows sealed. Kakashi had never seen something so disgraceful, not only had both put him and their client at risk from the beast wave palm, Sasuke had actually attacked Naruto or his clones anyhow. That was so going on the report, and straight to the Hokage so the old bats didn't get to intercept it. But what was that jutsu the man used on Naruto, anyway? Even this master of 1000 jutsu had no clue. OC ninja techniques any others come from the show or manga. Water release, bubble barrier. Rank, C. Description, creates a wall of bubbles to block attacks from the foe, ineffective against kunai and shurikens. Genjutsu, Zora's illusion of darkness. Rank, B. Description, creates a realistic illusion of one's darkest desires only applicable to one person at a time. Wind release, hurricane gust. Rank, B. Description, like a fire style, the user blows from their mouths a large gust of intense wind to blow away foes, limited range. Hidden ceiling jutsu, Pawa Fuyo Shiru, Ketsuki no Saigon no Kopi. Rank, S. Description, that's for later, in the seal of the Kyubi. The great Kyubi, the greatest of the biju, our tailed beast, was in a bad mood, growling from behind her sealed cage. Of course, being sealed away in some annoying brat, your power being stolen for some two-wit idiot's use, can make you rather cross. But this boy, he was worse than any of the fox's previous hosts, for a simple reason. The biju, in the beginning, were genderless monsters. They were neither male, nor female. But based on whom they were sealed into at first, their genders were determined. Shukaku, the Hachibi and the Yandi became male, for example, while the Nibi and the Nandi, as well as herself, became female. Yes, the fearsome, nine-tailed fox, the Kayubi no Kitsune, was female. Shocking, isn't it? Hell, the only reason she would go on rampages, with tidal waves, earthquakes and mariachi music, was because she was having, periods. But being stuck in a boy, it was maddening. Totally different thought process, for one thing, and every time he looked at a girl with a blush, the poor critter felt like a lesbian. Add to it that stupid sexy jutsu that the boy had created, and she was almost contemplating destroying the brat once she had a chance, fading away for a time would almost be worth it. But what puzzled the Kyubi, other than why the male she was trapped in somehow managed to be dumber than the gobi after devouring a tank of wine and blood, a sight still laughed at in the biju 1000 year reunion parties, was what that strange ninja used on the boy. It had done massive damage to his genetic structure, which her powers were siphoned off to heal. Damn the Yandiame, hard to believe the Kitsune found the guy attractive, or was that just for being stuck in Kashina for so long? Though, she still had a picture of the Shodai Hokage somewhere in her cell. Speaking of, for some reason, a strange scent, similar to the Shodai's, was starting to fill her cell, for odd reasons, but she could also detect a much fouler scent, and others she didn't recognize. Of course, then there was the new seal, that was sitting on a large column of marble right in front of her, showing a giant orange N, which under it was a U of a lighter shade, and going through the middle of them both in the background of it was something that looked sort of like her tail. There were kanji on the seal's various parts, multiple different pairs of them. She'd read them, if only foxes could read, or count really. Dot the boy must be rubbing off on her, but she was definitely sure there were less than a dozen of them, for some reason. Were the scents coming from there? Forest in land of wave. Kakashi was grinning to himself. Naruto was back up and running once again. The copy nin still had no idea what sort of jutsu the kid was hit with, but he was up and running again, thanks to his tenant of course. Then, of course, Sasuke, 
who he had to free for his new brand of training, or torture actually for the two disgraces, had to try to stab the kid with a kunai while he was brushing his teeth after a shower, luckily it appeared Naruto was used to cold showers and Sasuke didn't have enough steam to succeed in a stealth approach. The idiot was so going to get it when they got back, civilian council and the bats be damned, but this training should be tough enough. For you see, over the breakfast table, Kakashi had brought up a point, the hunter nin's method of killing Zabuza was off, which led to a scary possibility the maniac was still alive. So, thus the training, or for Sasuke and his pet pink Pomeranian, torture. Okay, today's training is tree climbing. Humph, what are we, monkeys? And Uchiha doesn't climb trees like some common primate, Sasuke smirked, somehow ignoring the threats from Kakashi. Yeah, that was the Baka's job, Sasuke-kun is way too cool for it. Sakura chirped in, Naruto looked sadly down on the ground. Kakashi had to restrain himself from setting the girl on fire, too much paperwork. Actually, you will be climbing. Kakashi smirked, as he jumped onto the tree and commenced to scale up its trunk, backwards, with only his feet, without your hands. Cool, Naruto smiled, quite, and because of your teammates' actions, Naruto, they have to do it on their own, without any assistance. Summoning Jutsu, the smirking Kakashi summoned his pack of Ninkan dogs. Every time they fall to the ground, or stay on the ground, my pals will give them, a reason to get back up, the dogs almost appeared to be grinning. Hey, I am an Uchiha, how dare you train Adobe instead of Me? Because you put your injured sensei and more importantly, your client, in danger from the Rouge Ninja's attack, while Naruto used his own clone to block the attack. You also attacked his clones with a fireball jutsu. Now boys, I think those two need some motivation, Kakashi snapped his fingers, as the dogs barked loudly. Sakura decided to try and stand up for the two of them. Don't you even think about sending those mutts after Sasuke-kun, my mother is on the council, she'll send you to the ex. Grr, the tan-furred dog named Gariko made a few dog-style hand signs, before a burst of pebbles from the ground flew and struck Sakura in her overly large forehead, causing her to yelp and jump into the tree's closet branch, rubbing her injured head. Bull and Pakun then grinned, the pug and his bulldog ride doing hand signs. Bark. Bull stepped back, before a large sonic bark of lightning flew at the refusing Sasuke. Dog style fire release. Yip ember. Pakun snorted, dozens of small sparks flew from his nose. The sparks met the thunder bark, before combining with the thunder, creating a larger sonic bark that was filled with exploding lights like fireworks. Dog style fire release. Firework howl. Pakun smirked as the blast hit Sasuke, sending him halfway up the tree, only for his head to smash through the wood like some dart. Ha! Take that Tem! Naruto laughed, as did Kakashi. I hope that knocked some sense into them. Well come on Naruto, let's train somewhere else, oh by the way, try to mark your high points, Pakun send word if they cheat. Gotcha Kakashi-sama, Pakun smirked. Later at Tazuna's house. Today was a rewarding day for Kakashi and Naruto that is. The two, sitting around the fire late at night with a cup of hot chocolate, something Naruto seemed to quickly take to. Kakashi heard that Gaidu imported them from a port town in the land of hot water, Kakashi decided to get some next time they went on a mission around there. Kakashi smiled as he observed his current favorite student sip his drink. Kakashi not only got to see his two problem students utterly embarrassed in such a fashion, but was also able to teach Naruto a great deal. Kakashi was starting to get the big picture, Naruto was a kinetic learner, so he learned things by doing, not with reading on it like Sakura did. He also had shadow clones, and with them was able to learn at an astonishing rate. With hundreds of clones, he was quickly able to scale the trees to their halfway point, and his last climb had set him up to the top of the tree. He was saddened to hear, however, that Sakura had matched that an hour later and Sasuke 15 minutes afterwards. Though he was happy to see that they elected to skip dinner, apparently they were covered in burn marks, bruises, bite marks and smelled like dog piss. Naruto-san, Kakashi spoke up, politely respecting his star pupil while back in Konoha, Homura, Kaharu and Mrs. Haruno appeared to be sweating in their sleep, like they were having some sort of nightmare. His student looked up from his drink at his masked sensei. Yeah, Kakashi sensei. Kakashi looked serious. 
You're going to have to be careful with your jutsu for now on, Kakashi commented. How come? Kakashi sensei. Naruto was alarmed. Did he have to stop with his shadow clones? As you know, I fear that Zabuza is still alive, and that most likely, the hunter Nin is with him. If that is true, and if Sasuke continues his trend of arrogance, it is likely that he will fight more than he can chew, and enter a life and death situation. I'm all for him getting beaten into a corner like that, maybe give him some humility, but if he does, his Sharingan could activate. Wait, you mean the whole, copy jutsu thing? Naruto said, starting to get it, are you saying he might steal my patented sexy jutsu? Kakashi groaned, you had that thing patented, Naruto smiled. Yeah, apparently Oji-san thought it would be useful for seduction missions, whatever those are, Naruto shrugged. Kakashi was now sighing. Worse than that, your shadow clone jutsu. I'm going to have to watch it too, but if he gets his Sharingan up and running, he could start trying to gain jutsu that way, but the fact is, he'll go overboard with it, just to surpass you, loose all his chakra, and die, and you will be blamed for it by the council. Kakashi finished, Naruto smirked. So, all I have to do is try to keep the Tem from overdoing it, and my shadow clones are free range. Until I can apply the Sharingan proofing seal to you, yes. In the scroll of sealing was a seal made by the ancient Senju that made one's jutsu safe from the theft of the Sharingan. With the competition between the two genin, that jutsu could be their savior. What about you? You have 1000 jutsu he could steal, Naruto asked concerned. I can't seal it onto myself. It will wreck my Sharingan eye, though unlike you, I can be subtle in my jutsu. Hey, I can avoid half the village's chunin force for over two hours, I call that subtle, Dadbeo. And your sexy jutsu, he, I guess you have a point there. Several day later, after several days of guarding the bridge builder, one emotional clash between Naruto and the builder's grandson, more dog bites and a lot of remedial taijutsu, Naruto's taijutsu had rapidly improved, to a point he could hold out against Kakashi in it, for five minutes anyway, with the Ika Ika in hand. Even the others were improving, though Kakashi had them spar alone, with several dogs watching them. Anyway, Naruto was taking a break from shadow clone training, while Kakashi took watch over at the bridge. However, as he relaxed, he failed to notice a black-haired youth in a pink kimono approach him from the woods, with a basket filled with herbs. He's, one of the ones guarding the bridge builder, the person thought, perhaps, I should take him out now, one foot to the neck ought of do it, it was at that point that said boy jumped up in surprise, with a kanai in hand. Who's there, I'm a ninja, and I'm armed, oh, hey there. Naruto rubbed the back of his head nervously, the stranger got a look at him, the orange wearing weirdo stuck out like a thumb, pretty much anywhere. Strange garb for a stealthy ninja, though then again Zabuza, the stranger's savior, carried a giant butcher knife around. Hello, the stranger smiled. The boy, Naruto blushed. Oh, hey there, the name's Naruto, of Kanahagakur. My name's Haku, I live around here, and I'm looking for herbs, the person smiled. Herbs, what do you need a bunch of weeds for? The person smiled. I have an important person, he's in need of healing, and so I decided to look for some. The strange person named Haku, who Naruto sort of couldn't tell the gender of, continued to forage in the grassy clearing for seemingly random herbs. An important person, Naruto asked. Haku continued to forage. Of course, don't you have any? Naruto smiled. Of course, there are Aruka sensei Oji-san, Chuki-sama, Ayame-chan, and Kakashi sensei, Naruto stood up. Haku couldn't help but smile smiled. You seem to care about a lot of people. That's good, for you see, they say you can only be your strongest if you're protecting someone precious to you, there is a saying around here, Haku smiled, before getting up and leaving. Naruto looked up into the clouds. Yeah, and that's why I want to be Hokage. OC ninja techniques any others come from the show or manga. Dog style earth release. Pebble Musket. Rank. D. Description. A Ninkan dog focuses, and nearby pebbles fly and strike its foe. Is mainly used to deal with insects. Dog style. Lightning release. Thunder bark. Rank. B. Description. The dog focuses, and a large sonic bark infused with chakra and electricity is sent flying at the foe. Dog style fire release. 
Yip Ember. Rank. D. Description. The dog sneezed, sending small embers flying at the foe. Mainly used to deal with insects. Dog style fire release, firework howl. Rank. A. Description. The collaboration between an electric release howl jutsu and a fire jutsu. A large sparking fire is sent at the foe, with massive power behind it. Zabuza and Haku's room, Gedu's fortress. The tall, fearsome, and most horrifying of all, eyebrowless Zabuza, of the seven swordsmen of the mist, rolled his shoulders with the concurring pop. His assistant, the young Haku, smiled. You're feeling better, Zabuza sama, Haku asked. If anything could be seen under Zabuza's mask over his mouth, he might actually be smiling. Yes Haku Chan, I am. Zabuza had found the young Haku during a mission many years ago, before his attempted coup against the Yandiame Mazukaj. While she, yes his companion was female, hadn't taken part, she agreed to leave with him, and has since followed him on his mission, to get enough money and physical power to help his old friend. Truth was Zabuza was old friends with Yagura, the Yandiame Mazukaj and Jinchuriki of the Sanbi, the three-tailed turtle. Back in his childhood, they had been friends, both were misunderstood orphans, Zabuza just a few years older than Yagura. In fact, the reason he slaughtered an entire graduation class, besides to prove that an orphan with self-training was good enough to be a Mizu ninja, but also to spare Yagura the fate of fighting your own comrades. Because of everyone's hatred for him, he would have been gang attacked, and if the three tails was unleashed. Zabuza had also known Yutakata, the Rokubi Jinchuriki. Back in the day they had fought together, once he, Yutakata and Yugura had single-handedly defeated an entire army of shinobi from the Land of Frost during the Third Shinobi World War. However, with Zabuza's help, Yugura was able to figure out how to control the Sanbi, because of a forgotten Kekai Genkei his clan had, a dujutsu that caused Yugura's distinct purple eyes, which enabled him to control the Three Tails. He hadn't been able to activate it, and the Sanbi didn't exactly help, until Zabuza managed to help him. Afterwards, Yagura was quickly able to become the Yandiame Mazukage at age 15, and Zabuza one of the legendary swordsmen to help his friend maintain power. Then, his friend began suffering from nightmares, all of which had a similar pattern, red eyes with Tomo. These dreams stirred the three tails, causing the poor cage horrid nightmares and hallucinations. Then, there was the Kiri Council. Like Konoha, the council had a civilian side, and they were petrified of Kekai Genke. This, rather absurd fear resulted in a war in Mizu decades ago, that they kept alive in the civilians of the Land of Water via propaganda, as well as the ninja villages. That's why clans like the Yuki that Haku hailed from had to go into hiding. The last time he had seen Yagura, he had just had one of his Anbu. A man named Ao do some spying on the civilian council with his stolen by Akugan eye, and had made a startling discovery. They were paying a mysterious group, with strange black robes covered in red clouds, to influence the Mizukage with a mysterious genjutsu, causing the unrest of the beast inside of him, that they were able to use as a sign of insanity to keep Yugura from interfering with the bloodline purges that were devastating the local ninja. These ninja, one who had a hunched back and a strange hat, and the other with long blonde hair and an obnoxious voice, never said who they brought in, but they were definitely responsible. So, Yagura gathered Ao, one of the top janin in the village named Meijirumi, a rather attractive redhead with two kekai genke, and himself, and devised a plan. Yagura knew that dramatic action had to be done, and knowing his name would be blackened from the council's action regardless, asked his old friend to stage a coup to kill the civilian council, while Ao and Mei unsealed the three tails and released it, to stop the council for getting their hands on it for their own use. However, he did leave a few requests. One, that no matter what, he protected the young Haku, who he began to see like his own daughter. She was the last of her clan, as far as he could tell, and didn't deserve what was happening here. The second was to look for his distant cousin, Yukimaru. He had heard he had vanished, picked up by the S-class Sanin, Orochimaru of the Leaf Village, and Yagura was fearful that he could extort the young boy's power for his own use. So, while Zabuza managed to kill about half the civilian council and a few corrupt members of the Shinobi Council, along with some guy who sold cabbages who assaulted Yagura with them when he was a kid, failed in a complete coup and fled the village with Haku, 
Though never finding Yukimaru, Aoi Mei managed to unseal Yugura and set up a power struggle. Last he heard, Mei was close to becoming the Gondaim Mizukage, but he couldn't return yet, not until he found Yukimaru and destroyed the one who ruined his friend. Penny for your thoughts, Zabuza San. A voice spoke up, startled. Zabuza drew his sword as Haku drew out a dozen or so Sanban. There, standing at the door, was the unknown shinobi who attacked and sealed Naruto. Who are you? Zabuza demanded. Answer and I might not gut you. That, Zabuza San, I can't do, but I do have information you might be interested in. Zabuza would have rose an eyebrow, if he had any. Yeah, get on with it, the stranger smiled. I heard about your bond with the Yandiame, your friend I believe. I have information about his controller. Care to ask? Zabuza growled. What do you know? The stranger smiled under his disguise. His controller has the Sharingan. His name is Uchiha Madara. Haku looked confused. Zabuza Sama, from what I read, that man must be ancient. He co founded Kanahagakur no Sato, and how can he be alive? The stranger shrugged. How does Zabuza San lack eyebrows? Or how did Yugura Dono hold a giant turtle inside of him? Is anything truly impossible, with enough work that is, that closed the argument? Yes, Madara Tem has many plans, but amongst them is the rebuilding of the Uchiha clan to serve him. However, including himself, there are three Uchiha left in the world, and both he and Uchiha Itachi of Akatsuki are sterile. Madara from the techniques he extends his life with, and Itachi is sterile from the sickness that's consuming him so that leaves only one Uchiha left in the world, Uchiha Sasuke, currently guarding the bridge builder. Zabuza and Haku's eyes were wide open. So, if we kill the brat, that Tem will be screwed, no clan for him, Zabuza grinned evilly under his mask. The stranger stayed unmoving. Or, you could capture him, and force Madara to come out in the open, and then take him on your own. Zabuza turned towards his young ward, daughter in all but law or blood. Haku Chan Change of plans, ignore the bridge builder, capture the Uchiha while I occupy the copy Nin, Haku nodded. Yes, Zabuza Sama, the stranger opened the window as if to jump out, but left with one more thing. If you see a blonde haired kid with whisker marks, try not to kill him. You'll only regret it. Wave Country Bridge construction site sometime later. Kakashi sighed, here he was, stuck on a bridge, either having to work or watch the duo while they mutter darkly and glare at him. Naruto was on house watching duty, the poor kid was exhausted for taking the entire watch yesterday so Kakashi could make sure the duo had learned something, without dogs, persuading, them, so here he was, keeping tabs on Duckhead and Howler Pinky, he hoped at least they'd fall off the bridge. Of course, it had to be something else. Hey, lazy bones, you and your squirts could help, you know, Tazuna grumbled. Kakashi sighed. Yes, Tazuna san, shadow clone jutsu. A second Kakashi appeared next to the original and was sent out to work. He smirked at his students. You two follow him, his students groaned, but seeing as though this guy could re-summon the devils, or dogs as they were actually, they decided to do it, reluctantly, while all the time, planning some way to deal with the ninja dogs. Though, while engrossed in their work, or in the only lazy bum's case, his Ika Ika, mist had begun to creep across the bridge. Meanwhile at Tazuna's house, what, are you saying that they already left to attack the bridge? Naruto demanded towards the bound samurai. The poor blonde haired kid, having been allowed to sleep in by Kakashi, woke up to the house being broken into by two samurai thugs hired by Gaidu. Though, in combination with Inari, the bridge builder's grandson, the two punks were tied up, and being interrogated by Naruto and Tsunami, Tazuna's daughter, via a frying pan. Smack. Ow. Bye. Naruto kicked the swearing mercenary in the nuts. Watch it. There's a kid here. Now what was this about attacking the bridge? The other hired gun smirked. You're too late kid. Zabaza's already there, tearing apart your pathetic team, and the old man, Tsunami smacked him with the frying pan. Smack. Grandpa. Inari gasped. Naruto glared at the two. He can kill my teammates, world would be better without them, but Kakashi sensei beat Zabuza once, he can do it again. He won't allow Tazuna sama to die. Tsunami san, Inari kun, you can hold these guys, right? Inari grinned evilly as he nodded. Naruto smirked. 
he was starting to like the kid. Meanwhile back on the bridge. Give it up Zabuza, Kakashi grunted, as he held back the great swordsman using a kanai. Sakura, with her own kanai in hand, was guarding Tazuna while shivering, meanwhile Sasuke had been trapped by the false hunter Nin in some sort of ice mirror. The false hunter ninja was amazing, being able to use one-handed hand signs, and add to it the rare ice release Kekai Genke, and this ninja was one skilled piece of work, if they were loyal to the village, that's the type of ninja who could have become Mizukage. You won't get the bridge builder. Disturbingly, Zabuza was laughing. The laugh actually seemed to have humor behind it, as it ranged out across the battlefield. He smirked. Kakashi, 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 I'm not after the bridge builder, the Uchiha is my target now, Haku will defeat him and I will defeat you and the pink-haired waste of air over there, and I think I'll leave the old geezer be, never liked that Gaidu guy much anyway, one certain pink-haired waste of space was now fuming. Leave Sasuke-kun alone, you jerk, tell your butt buddy over there to get lost and get straight. Sakura yelled, Zabuza growled at the insult, his anger giving him leverage over Kakashi's blade. One could even see an inflated vein, or anime tick off mark, on his head. Listen here you brat, you pathetic, talentless cunt, Haku is like my daughter, and a better kunoichi than you ever will be, and if you call her that again, I will mount your head on my fireplace, along with that jerk who damned my best friend, and use it as a dart board. To add insult to injury, he twisted his blade, knocked the kanai out of Kakashi's grip and sent the copy nin stumbling back. While not in a way to allow an easy decapitation, Zabuza instead tossed the kanai at the girl, who blocked it with her own kanai, but the blade began to spin in the air and thumped her in the large forehead, knocking her out with a concussion. Sasuke-kun, she mumbled in her out-cold state. Zabuza growled. That type of deadweight always bit the dust in the final exams, at least Kiri was safe from that kind of ninja, he spat at the ground near Sakura. Zabuza-san, Kakashi said with odd politeness. Perhaps the thought of losing them caused the copy nin to respect the demon of the mist a bit more, as much as I would like to be free of the two imps, I would also like to keep the council for executing me for the death. The Uchiha is the pet of the elder and civilian council, whose most obnoxious member is the pinky's mother, so I have to keep them safe, well no one said I had to teach them anything really, so, water release, dragon bullet technique. A water dragon rose, aided by the mist and the sea, and flew at the missing nin, who did the hand sign serpent, bore and slammed his hand to the ground. You can't win Kakashi, water release, turtle barrier. A huge turtle, the shape of the sandy in miniature, rose up from the ground and blocked the attack, sending a cascading wall of water into the air. Now Kakashi had lost the man again, thanks to the hidden mist jutsu in the air. Fire release, night illumination. Kakashi did a tiger seal followed by a dog, as a ring of fire flew from his hands and briefly illuminated a flash of metal, Zabuza no doubt trying the silent killing technique again. The two enemy ninja took notice of one another's moves and called out at once after several hand signs. Water style. Great waterfall technique. Two huge waves of water struck them both as the battle raged on between Haku and Sasuke, the last youth of the Uchiha and his fire jutsu versus the last remnant of the Yuki clan in her ice mastery. He was surrounded by the mirrors with Haku warping from mirror to mirror while tossing hundreds of Sanban into the last Uchiha, who now resembled a rather large hedgehog. However, the Uchiha had several advantages. First of all, the mirror jutsu she was using consumed a mad amount of chakra. Despite several sessions of specialized training with Zabuza, she didn't have the reserves to do this for much longer. In a ground fight, she'd be in range for his fire jutsu and that new Sharingan he had obtained after the first 50 Sanban. Second, she was to take him alive, so she couldn't use lethal force, limiting her jutsu. True, while she hated killing, she had a few jutsu for that from Zabuza. Finally, that Sharingan was tracking her movements, last time he tossed a kunai during a Sanban wave, she had gotten a cut on her upper arm, after a few other attempts of his, he was getting slowly closer, and she was running out of options. Perhaps a change in the flow of battle might help. Doing a few rapid one-handed seals, several ice spikes rose from the ground towards the Uchiha, who easily dodged them. Is that all you got? He boasted, or has my Sharingan, the ultimate Kekai Genke, made you realize your pathetic existence pales to mine? Haku smirked, 
as she had him where she wanted him, as she flew from an ice mirror and sent a dozen sunbon straight at his unguarded back. But then his damn Sharingan kicked in. Fool, that isn't even worth copying. Haku shook her head, he couldn't copy it anyway if he tried. Fire release, great fireball technique. A huge fireball was blasted through the Sanban, melting them before hitting Haku, knocking her back. She rolled on the ground, as the flames burned a hole through the battle robes, showing an ice-colored bra underneath. Sasuke smirked. What, you're a girl? No wonder you're so weak but I'll cut you a deal, become one of my bitches and help me revive my clan, and I'll let you live, Haku groaned. No way in hell I'd do that, you duck ass, Haku said as she dissolved into water. Sasuke's eyes went wide, that was a water clone. He cursed himself for not being able to copy it, before he heard creeping ice, as an ice spike flew straight at him, with a victorious Haku smiling under her battle mask. Game over, hey, Zabuza was vague in his orders, a guy didn't need an arm to revive a clan, did he? He could be still used as bait. But then, the orange ninja with blonde hair jumped down from above. And the hero is here, Dadbeo. It's him, Haku commented. Perhaps he'd be an actually decent employee. Shadow, Naruto began before noticing Sasuke's Sharingan. That's it Dobi, give me that jutsu of yours, Sasuke smugly thought. He groaned before stopping his jutsu and taking the ice spike himself right through the stomach, only narrowly avoiding the heart and lungs. Naruto, Kakashi gasped from outside the battlefield, before two water dragon bullets collided once more. Zabuza also commented on the battle. Oh no, that was off for Haku, that Uchiha must have said something really bad, have to remember to give him a little bit of torture once we have him, now to take care of you, Kakashi. Naruto's shout of pain soon filled the air. Ah! He yelled out. Sasuke smirked. This was the only thing that idiot was good for, a shield to protect his betters. Haku stared at him. Why would you take that attack for this, stain on humanity? Haku asked, retracting the ice spike, its frigidity barely avoided granting hypothermia, but blood loss was still occurring. Naruto groaned out. I said it, to this girl I met, and I'll say it again. I fight for my precious people. And one of them is my Oji San, the Sandame Hokage, told me, as did Kakashi Sensei, that no matter how much of a stuck up ass your teammates may be, you can't abandon them. If I was to let Sasuke die like this, I'd be worse than him, as those who abandon their team are lower than trash. Meanwhile, inside the seal, finally, the time had come. The little Baka she was sealed in had gotten himself into near mortal peril. Time for her, the Kayubi to save him and perhaps try to take control. She was in the mood for some destruction, or tacos, depending on what came first. However, as she led a stream of her chakra out to heal her host, she noticed some of it was being diverted, straight into that strange seal. What in Kami? The seal briefly began to glow orange, or at least in a portion of it, where a kanji glowed brightly, the kanji for storm. Back to reality, an orange-red glow began forming around Naruto, as his wound began to heal. The air began rippling with power, shaking the bridge slightly. Naruto then began forming tiger, dog, serpent and dragon. Storm release. Great twister. A huge twister of wind and lightning formed from Naruto, before expanding and crossing the field of battle, as Haku and Sasuke were pulled into its winds. What? Power? Haku gasped. How can the dobi? And why can't I copy it? Kakashi was wide-eyed, as were Tazuna and Zabuza. Haku, my bridge. Kakashi was the most shocked of all. That's a Kumo Kekai Genke. How is that possible? Cliffhanger. To be continued next chapter. OC Ninja Techniques. Any others come from the show or manga? Water Release. Turtle Barrier. Rank. C. Description. Summons a large, sandy shaped wall of water to block attacks. Fire Release. Night Illumination. Rank. D. Description. Creates a ring of fire to briefly light up a dark or foggy battlefield. Storm release. Great twister. Rank. Kekai Genke A. As the twister dissolved from the stone adorned bridge, Zabuza and Kakashi found themselves knocked to the ground, as were Haku, Tazuna, and Sasuke. Sasuke was unconscious, Tazuna was moaning about his back, and Kakashi and Haku were unable to move. Only Zabuza was able to push himself up. Wait, 
you're, that girl from before, Naruto gasped. Haku's mask had shattered, revealing her face. Yes, I am, she said meekly. How would this guy act like this, she nearly killed him. She mentally prepared herself for the emotional pain, that never came. Oh my god, you are so awesome. I can't believe how cool you were in thrashing that Tem around. He looks like a giant hedgehog, you've got to teach me how to do that. He laughed, Haku blushed, before speaking. I'm flattered, but I created the Sanban I use via my Kekai Jenke, and you can't teach, or copy that. She glared at said duck hedgehog, but you were the most impressive, Naruto-san, you somehow managed to create a massive twister with some sort of Kekai Jenke, Naruto looked confused. Ha, huh, that giant twister, how did you create it, and where did you get the hand signs, Kakashi grunted. Naruto shrugged. To be honest, I have no idea, the conscious fellow's sweat dropped. He's definitely unpredictable, Kakashi sighed. This was definitely going to be a lot of paperwork back in Konoha. Please tell me that there isn't a hole in my bridge, Tazuna groaned. Naruto took a look at the twister site. The only thing noticeable was a lot of melted water, some tem blood, a scorch mark, and small pothole. No, just a minor pothole, Tazuna cursed. Guess it could have been worse, but you better put some of those clones of yours on the job, my workers are unconscious, thanks to no brows over here. Don't make me kill you, and your teammate is out cold for now, so. I'm afraid, bridge builder, that that pothole is the least of your trouble now, a voice said. Turning around, Naruto and Zabuza spotted a short man in a brown business suit, with an army of 200 assorted thugs and the occasional yahoo. Gaidu, Zabuza growled, the short man, the island's fiend, Gaidu, grinned like a Cheshire cat. Ah, Zabuza san, so you've decided to ignore my orders for the bridge builder. Too bad, I was hoping to let you kill him and those leaf nins, then kill you and collect the bounties on you and the copy nin, and be on my way. Yeah, like these fools you hired could kill me, or anyone here. Hell, the pinky could beat your jokes of an army, the, jokes, growled at the insult Zabuza had thrown at them. Gaitu just smiled coldly. Ah the humor of the cornered man. Boys, destroy the bridge builder and the traitor, whoever takes him out gets his ice bitch, and who takes the bridge builder gets the pink one. The man smirked cruelly. Naruto looked back towards Kakashi. Can't we just toss her at them? He shook his head. It would after all be too much paperwork. Well then boy, you're with me. Seeing as I have no more reason to take the geezer's neck, and Haku's injured, I'll just kill these clowns and be on my way, Naruto smirked. Need some help with that, after all, protecting Tazuna is my mission, and protecting my sensei, or any of my precious people, is my duty, as is sadly my team as well, though if they get maimed I guess it couldn't hurt. Zabuza glanced at him, this kid was a lot like Yagura, if he squinted, he could almost see an image of his late friend overlapping the young kid, and could almost hear their voices as one. To be Hokage Mizukage, that's my dream, then everyone will have to recognize me, and I'll be able to protect my friends. Zabuza smiled, as he hosted his massive sword. Let's do it, Tazuna then wailed. Don't break my bridge, no matter what you do. The two ninja then charged at the armed horde. Naruto blocked a sword slice with a sharp kunai before creating a dozen shadow clones, who charged into the armed mob with more kunai at the ready. Naruto then jumped into the air, before yelling. Storm release, great twister. Now airborne, the tip of the storm just missed the bridge road and thus the mob was sucked up and spewed out randomly, hitting the ground with random snaps of broken necks and other bones. Haku and the others must have been lucky to escape so easily from the storm, or was it just his bad luck that Sasuke did? Heads up Genin, water release, great waterfall technique. A giant wave formed from the accumulated water in the air as the huge wave swamped the battlefield, wiping away rogues, while the shadow clones were able to avoid the attack. Kakashi sighed, and Haku gave him a curious look. Is it wrong to say that Naruto and your sensei over there work better as a team than my Genin? Haku laughed. Wait, they're actually a team. Back to the fight. Zabuza just cleaved a few swords man clean through, before he groaned. Some punk just managed to stab him with several kunai, in the back. Zabuza-san, a clone gasped before a rouge destroyed it. Haku gasped. 
Zabuza Sama, Haku cried she was unable to protect her master. She was failing as a tool. Her important person was probably fatally injured. URG, I'm sorry, Yagura Sama, Mei Chan, Ao San. Zabuza gasped for air, but I'm not going down alone. He charged blindly, ignoring more accumulating injuries, as he flew straight at the slowly retreating Gaidu. Zabuza, spotting him, yelled out a battle cry and tossed his blade, the great blade going straight into Gaidu, knocking both it and the man into the churning sea below, definitely dead. Naruto, after his shadow clones and twisters had finished off the last of the men, rushed to the downed man. Zabuza San, he gasped. The eyebrow less man looked at the boy and smiled. This boy was again starting to look like Yagura, or was his mind playing tricks on him? Boy, bring me to Haku chan, please. Naruto had tears in his eyes as he dragged the slowly dying man to his daughter. He lowered him next to her as Haku struggled up. Zabuza sama, Zabuza looked at her, please don't die, you're my special person, my reason to live, my two san. She cried. Zabuza raised his hand, and held it to Haku's cheek. Haku Chan, I, was glad that to meet you, it was nice to have a family of some kind. I couldn't, have stuck to my, and Yagura Sama's plan, without you. This boy, he's a lot like Yagura, he turned to the boy and Kakashi. He, has a biju in him, doesn't he, just like my friend, the Yandiame Mizukage, Naruto and Kakashi looked alarmed, Kakashi's regular eye briefly darting towards the unconscious failures of his. So, it's a secret then. Perhaps, that was better than it being known. Let me guess, it's the Kayubi. Don't answer, it's evident on your face. Zabuza smiled under his ripped mask. Kid, your dreams, don't give up on them, no matter what. Yagura had less than you did, in a town that made Konoha, look like a flower field, but he still became a cage, and I believe, you can too, he smiled. Haku, I'd give you my blade, but it's kind of underwater, my bad, Haku was crying as Zabuza chuckled, but, no matter, you were never a killer anyway, you don't need a sword. You just need a strong friend. Kakashi-san, I wish to ask you a favor, the copy nin looked over to the dying mist swordsman. Take Haku with you, to Konoha. Take her, under your wing, with this pathetic team of yours. Haku, like you stayed with me I asked that you stay with whatever your name was, Naruto sniffled with tears. Uzumaki, Uzumaki Naruto, yes, stay with Naruto-san, help him, become Hokage, but boy, beware, of your teammate, his clan has the power, to control containers, one did so to Yagura, and he'll do it, to you. Zabuza collapsed, as Haku let out a flood of tears. Zabuza Sama, later in the Hokage's office, Konoha no Sato. With the death of Geitu, by the hands of the late missing Nin, Momoichi Zabuza, things are looking up in the wave country now. The civilians ransacked his mansion, and now have all the money he stole from them, as well as interest. Trade is booming, no doubt in thanks to the new, great Naruto bridge, Kakashi was giving his report to the Sandame, with Naruto and Haku, now with a new leaf hiate, behind him. Wait, they named the bridge after me, Naruto said exited, before noticing Haku, it should have been the great Zabuza bridge, Kakashi smiled. Naruto, it was you who finished the bridge via shadow clones. While a certain duck head was stuck at the house, as it was, they named the wave entrance to the bridge the Zabuza gate, and the fire entrance the Kaisa gate, Naruto noticed Haku smile sadly at this. Naruto-kun, Kakashi-san, well done, the Hokage smiled as he blew from his pipe. You both went above and beyond the mission, which was evolved from a C rank to an A rank. I've already sent a bonus, along with your original pay straight to both of your accounts. Naruto's account was guarded by one of the Hokage's oldest friends in the bank, one who knew about Naruto's father. The man was firmly entrenched when it came to the vault. In his time he stopped countless attempts of civilians and ninja to take Naruto's cash for either spite or to repay the damage the Kayubi left. And you, Haku-san, I've already sent the non-bonus payments of both Haruno Sakura and Uchiha Sasuke, whose pay was deducted due to their crimes. As well their names being removed from the mission records on this mission, as well as a large fine deducted from their family accounts sent to Naruto's and Kakashi's accounts and the both of them placed on a full week of the most horrible D-ranked missions including catching Tora, 
cleaning the public restrooms and removing massive bunions from Choji's grandmother's feet. He tried to get them sent back to the academy, but the civilian council and elder council stood firmly against it, though he oddly got Donzo's support. Quote dot dot, into a new account in your name that I set up. That should be well enough to help get you started, before you take on more missions with Team 7. However, there is the matter of the bingo book price for Zabuza. Send it to the people in Wave, Haku said sadly, I can't use that kind of money, Naruto placed a hand on her shoulders as Haku blushed. Um, Haku, you okay, you kind of look like you have a fever or something, Kakashi smiled at Naruto's question. The kid was more concerned in how Haku was feeling, instead of trying to get a rebound chick. Okay, I understand, the Hokage smiled, Kakashi will give you elemental training while the rest of your team, as loosely as I can apply that term, is done with their punishment. Naruto-kun, I hope you don't mind, but I was unable to secure housing for Haku-san at the moment, so she'll have to stay with you. That was all that could be said before Haku fainted. While somewhere in town, a pale-eyed heiress suddenly felt someone was ripping her off somehow. Haku-san, Haku-san. Naruto shook her, before looking around at the older men. They smiled. I believe Haku-san is tired, why don't you take her to your home? Naruto nodded vigorously before taking the unconscious girl with him out of the room. Now the old Hokage turned towards Kakashi. Kakashi, I also read in your written report about Naruto's sudden ability to use the Kumo Kekai Genke, Storm Release, and the mysterious attacker, and I believe I may have an idea of what the attack was. I have never seen it myself, but it's an ancient technique, from years back. It's a seal that transfers Kekai Genke. As you may or may not know, Kekai Genkei originated as genetic mutations or as an advanced chakra skill, found in one out of a thousand shinobi. However, these were not something that could be passed on. Much like Tenzo is not able to pass on his wood release Orochimaru grafted onto him, are you and your Sharingan. However, this jutsu would pass the traits to another person, and grafted it into their DNA in a way that allowed for genetic passing of the traits. However, your description, may describe something else, an evolved version of the technique for passing multiple Kekai Genke, but as to the attacker, I have no leads. At the same time, the sheer amount of genetic alteration that Seal must have done to Naruto would kill any regular person. What about that Hiroko guy, who rumor says is preparing a way to obtain multiple ones, perhaps he has. And why would he give them to a Leaf Nin? He fled the village when the Nine Tails was announced, he's terrified of it. No way in hell would he give that sort of power to Naruto. So, thus the attacker, and his motives, remain unknown. Meanwhile at a hill in Wave, the wooded hill, sitting with a view of the sea, with a simple tombstone that simply read, Momoichi Zabuza, the stranger appeared to be paying his respects. He sighed. This changes my plan, your apprentice by going with our young Jinchiriki, alters my plans, but not in a negative way. Zabuza, you died a hero, I hope Kami sees that, he drew a scroll, and opened it, revealing a very thin transparent veil of some sort. Sealing style. Undisturbed rest of the dead. The stranger covered the tomb with the veil, the veil not detectable by chakra or the human eye. However, the grave glowed as the seal took effect. Wood release. Rise of the red fern. The stranger did a single dog hand sign, as a red fern formed next to the grave. He chuckled. I've been reading that book too much, he chuckled as he left the hill. OC techniques not in anime or manga. Ceiling style. Undisturbed rest of the dead. Rank. S. With the rejects, outside of Konoha public bathroom. How dare they make an Uchiha clean filth from mere commoners. This is the sort of thing the Dobi and his ice bitch should be doing, not me. Sasuke declared angrily. Of course, the Anbu, who was wearing a duck mask had been put in charge of watching them by the Sandame, and so didn't respond. Best not give the idiot any satisfaction. However, the two were refusing to enter the bathroom, stubbornly crossing their arms looking away. This is a job for the Dobi, and his new ice bitch, not for me, the last Uchiha. Yeah, Sasuke-kun is better than this. They continued to rant, until the bathroom's occupant, Chuza Akamichi exited. As he spotted the two troublemakers, he got an evil grin on his face. Ah, the two, Genin. I am a Uchiha, idiot. 
My mother's on the civilian council, so don't you dare treat me like that unless you want your F. The duck Anbu quickly sealed their mouths shut with his hands. The Anbu were the cage's self-selected special operations units. They did their operations covertly and silently, and helped maintain order in the village. Because their missions were covert, they were not on record, for either ninja or civilian. Recently, the Sandame had begun renovating the Yondaimi's house on the edge of the village. Only accessible from a hidden space-time warp point in the Hokage office, unless you had the key of course, this house was originally supposed to be given to Naruto once he became a chunin, as well as his heritage. By then, the Sandame had hoped that the young boy would be strong enough for the resulting assassination attempts. This would also help curb down anti-Narutoism. However, two things had changed. The first of them was his new rivalry with Sasuke. Once this became knowledge amongst the populace, there was no doubt that attacks against Naruto would increase, beyond the basic food price overcharging and possible lesson sabotage. While he knew of a few Anbu who already were outspoken against Naruto, the Sandame didn't want to risk one of the boy's guards going turncoat and aiding attackers. The second was the appearance of Haku. Naruto, while no Casanova, still had to share a single bedroom apartment, so a several bedroom house might be more preferable. However, Another of the more covert missions of the Anbu was to prevent anyone calling an Akamichi some sort of derogatory remark. Past experience has long taught the dangers of insulting people who could grow to the size of hills. Yes, Akamichi-sama, the large man grinned. Getting those two trapped on this duty may have earned Danzo the hop spring tickets, but this would be worth a paid night of dining for him, his wife and their son, on their friends' tabs of course. As he thought this, Inoichi found himself suddenly shivering and Shikaku suddenly felt glad to be on an A-rank mission. Yes, it is quite, convenient, for you see, I just got done sampling a delicious meal at Gasuniorishi, a new eatery on the west side of town, with a fine fiber and bean casserole, and well. Green mist suddenly began creeping from under the bathroom door. The two idiots then began to try and squirm away from their duty, slash doom. Quickly, the Anbu shoved them into the bathroom sealed the door and held the door back as the children began to desperately pound away. Some of the escaped green gas then approached a nearby tree, and the poor plant exploded into bark and dead leaves. Chusa chuckled and hummed merrily as he imagined the buffet awaiting him, as Duck whistled for backup. A snail-masked Anbu jumped down from a nearby building to his call. Duck, what's the problem? I need you to hold these poor, Jenin in here for a while. I have just received word of a food item at a new eatery that may be a danger towards humanity. Let me out of here, this isn't even fit for adobe. Sasuke yelled from inside the bathroom, and now the pink-haired fangirl just collapsed. Meanwhile with the so-called adobe, Kakashi, Haku and Naruto found themselves at a lake on the outskirts of the Hidden Leaf Village, preparing for a lesson while the others were, out of the way. Okay team. Today we are going to practice some water release techniques, Kakashi smiled. Naruto raised his hand. Yes, Naruto. Wait, Kakashi sensei, since when did I get water release? Kakashi smiled. It came with your storm release, Naruto. Kekai Genke such as storm and ice release come from the genetic combination of two or more elements. For example, storm is a mixture of lightning and water release, while ice is a mixture of wind and water release. Now, I'm focusing on water release, because that is a release we know both of you can use, Haku and Naruto nodded. Zabuza-sama already taught me how to create a water clone, Kakashi-sensei, Haku brought up. Kakashi smiled. True, but because Naruto's shadow clones already fill that niche, I believe that we should try to get something else in, before they get back. Naruto suddenly looked like he recalled something, started fiddling with hand signs slowly. Perhaps we should start with the water prison, I think that Naruto could pull that off nicely with his shadow clones, or perhaps we should. Naruto ended on a bird hand sign. Hope this works, water release, great waterfall technique. No, Naruto, Kakashi yelled before all three of them were engulfed in a huge tidal wave. Gulping for air, both Haku and Kakashi quickly got back on the surface of the water and obtained balance, but as Naruto rose he just kept blubbering around. Or perhaps Naruto-sama should focus on water walking first, Haku commented at his blubbering form with a blush. Kakashi frowned. True enough, 
but I don't know if I should be impressed with him for somehow picking up that technique on his own, or somewhat annoyed. The last day before Sasuke and Sakura freedom. After six days of trial, error, near drowning in an angry Mrs. Haruno and the two bats demanding the lessons ceased with the foreign Kunoichi and the dead last and instead focus on the Uchiha and his pink cheerleader of horror, once free from the poison ward at the hospital. They were getting shown the great waterfall jutsu. Now, standing on the surface of the lake was Naruto, clad in an orange pair of swimsuit trunks, against Haku, who was in a bluish-white one-piece swimsuit with Kakashi standing on the lake shore. Now that Naruto had finally gotten water walking down, it was time to test how far they had come. Haku was to become a member of Team 7 for the time being, and Kakashi needed to make sure the both of them were ready to go out for any more missions like Wave. Now that both had seals on them, administered by Kakashi himself, to block the Sharingan, their moves were free to go. Let's see how good you are, Naruto-kun, Haku smiled. Naruto sighed, it was either this, or Sama. Naruto began to do several rapid hand signs, for, lightning release, thunder ball. A ball of static electricity formed in Naruto's hand, before he tossed it at Haku, overhanded. The ball struck her head on before she dissolved into water. A water clone, Naruto said surprised, it was then that he noticed the water below him to begin to rapidly bubble. Water release, explosion, an explosion of air flew from below Naruto, sending him flying into the air as Haku burst to the surface, giggling. Naruto's eyebrow rose slightly, before doing his favorite hand sign. Shadow clone jutsu, a dozen shadow clones formed from above and all created thunderballs, before tossing them straight at Haku. Ice release. Protective ice dome. A dome of ice formed around Haku, blocking the shadow clones' attacks. Flying from the dome came dozens of ice spikes that quickly pierced the attacking clones, leaving only the original. Not bad. Storm release. Great twister. A huge twister formed on the lake surface, spinning straight towards Haku destroying her ice dome, but the girl was nowhere to be found. Wait, where did you go? Naruto was looking around confused. Water release. Explosion. Naruto was sent flying into the air once again before exploding into smoke. Haku gasped. A shadow clone. Water release. Great waterfall technique. A surge of water crossed the wave surface, swamping Haku and sending her flying to the shore. Apparently, Naruto had created an extra shadow clone, and used him as a distraction as he prepared the destructive jutsu. Haku then found herself panting on the lake shore, with Naruto lounging beside her. Not bad Haku-chan, not bad at all, Naruto smiled. The girl smiled, it took him long enough to call her that. Not bad yourself, Naruto-kun, Kakashi smiled as he shimmered over towards them. Fine spar today and tomorrow we begin our first mission as a united team again, Haku and Naruto groaned, Kakashi sighed, I hate them too, but we have to put up with them. Hopefully, it will be something where you guys won't need to kill one another over. What they didn't realize were two things. First of all, they were being watched from on top of a cliff nearby, via the white-eyed, all-seeing by Akugan, by none other than Naruto's admirer, Stalker, the blue-haired, blue-eyed Hinata Hayuga. She had a smile on her face after watching the two fight. Amazing Naruto-kun, those jutsu were incredible. I hope I can pull off something just as amazing, she poked her fingers together. She would match Naruto's skill one day, and then earn his heart, though this new girl could be trouble for that plan. Smiling, she decided to ask Kurenai-sensei if she could give her some extra training tomorrow. The other, was the mission itself they would get. Team 7 had no idea what they were about to find themselves thrust into. In a misty hideaway in the land of tea, altar room. Locked up in a cage, sitting next to a floor littered in coal, was a large bird. Not just any type of bird, but an ostrich. This ostrich, who had three pink ribbons on his neck, was an ostrich that Team 7 had returned home on a mission some time ago. This was Mr. Ostrich. The bird was glaring angrily at his captor before somehow manifesting a voice, yelled. What's the big idea, locking me in this cage? Just who do you think you are? A male voice then laughed. Oh sorry, my ninja ostrich friend. The bird paled. Yes, I know about your practice in the ninja arts, plotting your escape and your freedom. 
I recently heard you successfully mastered the Shadow Clone Jutsu, no. Maybe, but only to earn my freedom. Humans will not hold me in their possession forever. The voice laughed out again cheerfully. Who knows, if this goes wrongly, you might just be freed forever. The bird paled. Did this guy plan to kill him? But, as for a name, a figure walked out of the shadows, before the ostrich. You may refer to me, as Taizum, it was the mysterious shinobi. OC techniques and description. Lightning release. Thunder ball. Rank. C. Description. Compresses electric chakra into a ball in one's hand to throw at foe. Water release. Explosion. Rank. C. Hokage's office. The Sandame was stuck behind a mountain of paperwork, almost wishing he would keel over right this minute. Perhaps the greatest enemy of any cage was the mountains of paperwork that resulted. Sure, whenever a big shot like a biju attacked, you got to fight, and you got your face on the monument, but all the paperwork was still nasty. Add to it that almost all of the paperwork was from the civilian council. Lessening of the vandalism punishment, are they trying to ask permission to ransack Naruto's apartment, denied. The Hokage tossed the paper aside, in the much larger pile. Did they really think they'd get these laws? Honestly, were they just trying to annoy him? Back in his youth, and during the other Hokage's reigns, the cages would use bunchons to do the paperwork. Much less stressful, and it freed up time to go out with Jiraiya for research. Damn aging, he just couldn't do a good shadow clone to do his job like he used to. His chakra replenished too slowly, and his clones last too shortly, to do it without killing himself. The Sandame wasn't quite sure if the other cages did the same thing for their paperwork, though he did know that the young Takigakur leader, Shibuki, had came to Konoha for shadow clone lessons with Ebisu. Takigakur, the village had an alliance with Kanahagakur, and it had since the first great ninja wars. In fact, that village was one of the reasons behind his law concerning Naruto. He had been old friends with Shibuki's father, and he heard about how they treated their Jinchuriki, a young orphaned girl named Fu. Apparently, Shibuki was her only friend, and her cousin as it appeared. The Sandame hoped that his law would at least make things simple enough for Naruto, and seeing as he wasn't mugged in the streets, perhaps it worked. Or was it just his loyal Anbu, Chunin and Jonin, like Kakashi, Gai, Anko, Shikaku, Uruka and Tenzo? Of course, this wasn't Kumo, which the Sandame saw as the best place for Jinchuriki. Soon as Jinchuriki was hated and driven insane, though the child was only Naruto's age, the Iwa Jinchuriki both left the village, with one of them loathing humanity, Kiri's Yandiyame was tortured by some odd genjutsu while the Six Tails had become a missing nin, who the cage had tried to track down at one point hoping he could teach Naruto about his powers, and the acid burns his Anbu received showed the guy wasn't interested. But Kumo, because a one Jinchuriki called Killer B's heroic actions, valued the two of them greatly. They even had a Jinchuriki festival once a year, though perhaps it was because B was the son of their Sandame and the brother of the Yandiyame Rakage, the two even had their own houses. Though, such debates were just for thought. He then reluctantly returned to his paperwork. Removal of teacher Aruka Yumino, for blatant favoritism towards Naruto Uzumaki, honestly, are they just trying to punish those close to Naruto? He then signed something below it, revised, removal of teachers and political figures that showed blatant antagonism towards Naruto for only his, special, problem before sending it back via Anbu. He wondered how they would react. Speaking of Uruka, their investigation had turned up some evidence for them. Uruka had evaluated Naruto's old textbooks, and found that several key pages were missing, such as ones on the clone jutsu, genjutsu, chakra control and hand signs. They also appeared removed by a low-level water jutsu scalpel, something taught by medical nin, which Naruto certainly was not nor any academy student before him, but the principal of the academy was trained as a medical nin. This man was currently held in interrogation, with Anko who had found a new torture involving rope, a sharp clawed obese feline, and that recently banned dish from the new eatery, that fiber bean casserole. Serutobi didn't want to think about it. But hopefully, Naruto would receive the justice he deserved for all of his harsh treatment. Perhaps by the time he returned from his C-rank mission with Team 7 to find a stolen ostrich, of all things, out in T-country. 
But just as he finished denying a request for the right for civilians to bear guns in Konoha and the use of them to protect their properties, probably some other harebrained scheme to harm Naruto, a loud scream was let out from a nearby room. Hiruzen, how dare you threaten just teachers and the entire civilian and elder council? That d boy is addling your mind. Kaharu yelled at him. He chuckled. This was actually kind of fun. And they were wrong. Danzo was actually on his side these days. Perhaps bringing a rare mistress of the ice Kekai Jenke, or perhaps gaining one himself, swayed his old rival. Hiruzen smiled, before sending his Anbu to remove her. Land of Tea, rode before. In an ideal story, the merry team of four, led by their sensei, would be rapidly approaching their target without a hitch. Of course, life isn't just some story written by anyone. No, while Team 7 was making good time, there was a clear divide in the air. On one side there was Sasuke and Sakura. Sasuke was glaring at his teammates Haku, Naruto and their sensei, sharing in a blaze. Sakura stood behind him, being useless as always. All right Dobi, do a shadow clone. Sasuke ordered. Naruto smiled evilly, with Haku behind him, but unlike Sakura she wouldn't be useless if this got ugly. Kakashi sighed, this wouldn't end well. And why should I, Tem? The Tem glared, but his Pomeranian barked. Because he ordered you to, Baka. Sasuke, learn the thing yourself, and not with those pathetic eyes of yours. Naruto smiled as he walked swiftly up to Kakashi with Haku behind him. Kakashi actually seemed surprised. You know, it's nice to see you're able to just walk away like that, Naruto. Perhaps you're maturing, Naruto smiled. Gash, thanks Kakashi, though being more mature than the Tem might just be like saying you're faster than a rock, behind him, two pairs of eyes bored into him. But before they could try to stab them in the back. Greetings, Team 7, so, nice of you to show, the team rapidly turned around in shock. Right behind them, was the mysterious Nuke Nin. You. Give me your power like you did the dobi, Sasuke demanded. The figure raised an eyebrow, unseen behind his darkened face. And why, should I do that, Uchiha-san? Kakashi was slightly more upfront. No mind games, whoever you are, I never got your name. You may call me, Taizyum. Taizyum, what game is it you're playing anyway? Attacking Leaf Nin, pretending to be on Gatu's side. Wait, you, Haku said surprised. All heads turned to her. Haku-chan, you know this guy? Naruto asked confused. She nodded. Yes, this man talked to Zabuza-sama and me before we went to the bridge, something about Zabuza-sama's past. Haku seemed to be glaring at Sasuke as she said this. Taizyun, was what you said, true? I must know. Taizyun stood unwavering. It is true. Yagura was ruined by one, of his kind. He glared at Sasuke, but that's not why I'm here. You can just call that confirmation of a tidbit. You kidnapped an ostrich, dare I ask why? Kakashi questioned. Taizyun laughed. Now, I could explain my complicated plan, but your genin just don't have the attention span. Let me just give you a brief rundown. It's all about an experiment, to obtain the power I need, to avenge. Well actually why am I talking when I should be blasting? Beast wave palm. A wave palm of air was sent flying at the group with a large explosion ensuring. Shadow clone jutsu, the explosion the smoke it gave off gained a new tint from the obvious use of a shadow clone shield. Taizyun stood unwavering as the smoke cleared, to show Naruto charging at him. Lightning release, thunder ball, a ball of electricity formed in Naruto's hands, before it was tossed straight at Taizyun. The man smirked, storm release, cloud wall, a wall of storm clouds formed in front of him, blocking the attack with an explosion of clouds. But from that smoke cloud, a dozen shadow clones flew at him. Uzumaki Barrage, a dozen punches and kicks were sent straight at Taizyum, who was sent flying into a tree. However, he quickly got back up, and smiled. Your taijutsu improved, eh. Well then, prepare for some fun. He dissolved into water. Kakashi then got poked in the shoulder, as two clones of Taizyum appeared next to him. Storm release. Blade of Katrina. Two blades of thickened clouds formed in the hands of the clones, who sliced them at the copy nin. A water clone, and why can't I copy it? Sasuke grumbled, as a shadow appeared behind him. 
It was Taesium. Quickly twisting, Sasuke blocked a fist from Taesium, before he smirked, before dissolving again into water, with another behind him. Wind release. Hurricane gust. Both Sakura and Sasuke were blown into a tree. However, he then felt his feet chill. Ice release. Ice manacles. Ice manacles had formed at Taesium's feet. Haku smirked. Ice release. Ice spike. Spikes of ice flew and pierced Taesium's chest, before he became a wooden log. It was a substitution. What? Not again. Naruto groaned. This guy was slippery. Kakashi, who had just taken out the water clones with a swiping Chidori, turned towards Haku and Naruto. Fighting this guy isn't going to be easy. You two need to find that oversized pigeon he has here, so we can get the hell out of here. Naruto was shocked. But you'll be overwhelmed by this guy. Beast Wave Palm. A wave palm flew and struck near them, destroying the last few shadow clones near them. Haku nodded. Naruto kun, we can't wait. Kakashi sensei is right, we need to complete our mission. Naruto sighed, before the two of them jumped into the trees. Taizun watched them leave. URG, there goes my fun. Fire release. Great fireball technique. A huge fireball went flying straight at Taizun, who gazed at it with half his closest eye, before doing a few hand signs. Fire release. Flame bullet. A larger fireball flew from Taizun's mouth and struck the fireball head on. It extinguished them both. Taizun then commented. Wow, you actually have a rather impressive fireball or it was a fluke. Sasuke was angry now and thus charged straight at him. With Taijutsu, Taizun blocked his fists, before tripping Sasuke with his leg, sending the boy to the ground. Storm release. Blade of Katrina. A blade of clouds formed and was lowered straight at Sasuke, before from out of nowhere, a great fireball flew into him and sent him flying. Kakashi had saved the last Uchiha, again too much paperwork if he died. However, Taizun dissolved into water again. Shit, this guy can't be human with all this chakra, Sasuke grumbled, failing to acknowledge his sensei saving his life. Taizun, now in the apple tree above him, quickly did a jutsu. Wind release. Drill air bullet. A burst of air like his other bullets flew straight at the genin, John in and out cold lump of a pinky. Kakashi quickly did another great fireball that struck the drill air bullet and destroyed it. Kakashi was cursing inside though, with that boy's Sharingan, he couldn't use most of his arsenal. However, Taizun seemed to ignore the Sharingan for some reason. A reason Sasuke demanded answers for. Why can't I copy your jutsu? Taizun chuckled. It's simple really. I know how to cancel the Sharingan's effect on me. It's really quite simple. How dare you? The Sharingan is the ultimate Kekai Genkei. Ninja art. Apple Shuriken. The apples on the tree Taizun was hiding in flew at Sasuke before splitting into pieces and impacting into his forehead rapidly, knocking him unconscious. I believe a not wise man once said, flutter like a butterfly, sting like a bee, no. This is buzzing like a bee, striking like a butterfly. Kakashi saw it now, Taizun had massive chakra stores, and used massive jutsu to wear his opponent out before taking them out with lower leveled ones, like the apple shurikens. And it was working, Sasuke was panting, and he was running on maybe 25%. This guy could make some mean water clones. He sighed, before taking a gamble. Focusing lightning formed in and around his hand his hand, with bird calls shortly behind. It was the Chidori, he was too exhausted for his lightning cutter, so this would have to do. Taizun, prepare to meet your end. Kakashi began charging straight at the enigmatic ninja, with his Chidori ablaze. Taizun smiled under his darkened face. Ah, this looks like fun, if you really want to, storm release, dual blade strike, Katrina and Andrew. Two blades of storm chakra formed into Taizun's hands, before he jumped straight down at Kakashi. But as the two S-class shinobi were about to clash, they failed to notice one thing. Sasuke was watching Kakashi, with Sharingan ablaze. OC Jutsu and Techniques. Storm release, Blade of Katrina. Kekai Genkei A. Description, a blade of clouds is formed and can be used until dispelled or destroyed. Storm release, cloud wall. Kekai Genkei, C. Description, a wall of clouds is formed to absorb and neutralize lightning or water-based attacks. Ice release, ice manacles. 
Kekai Jenke, D. Description. Ice forms around the foe's feet or arms, restricting their movements. Ninja Art. Apple Shurikens. Rank. D. Land of Tea. Battlefield. The two attacking ninja, the copy nin Kakashi Hitaki, and the mysterious Enigma Tazium, crossed paths, before the both of them found themselves standing on opposite ends of one another, their jutsu dissipated. Kakashi and Taizun kept silent for a second, before Kakashi yelled out. Quote exclamation mark quote. A gash mark was on his side, rapidly bleeding blood. Holding onto his side, Kakashi dropped to one knee, the ground next to him quickly reddening. Taizun smirked from under his hood. So, it appears that this game is. He dropped down to one knee as well, as spare electric chakra was coursing across him from the Chidori. It appeared that they both were unable to go on. But as it was, the arrogant duck-haired boy, Sasuke, forced himself up. Not bad, Kakashi. Nice job weakening this fool, now to take him out, with my new jutsu, Chidori. The electric chakra formed onto his arm, with a thousand birds chirping all at once. Sakura, who was now back up, gleamed with admiration. Amazing, Sasuke-kun rocks, Kakashi was cursing inside, the fool now had an assassination jutsu. He was going to regret this, and he was starting to despise anyone born with a Sharingan, except Obito. Perhaps just because he didn't activate it until minutes before he died and didn't steal that fucking jutsu of his. Taizun was wide-eyed under his cloak. Of course, the fool had to slip up, and the Uchiha now had a deadly jutsu. This was just going to complicate his plans. Chidori, Sasuke charged at Taizun, before Sasuke twitched as a second later the Chidori flicked away. Sasuke then collapsed, Taizun breathed in relief, the fool was out of chakra now. Kakashi was mildly worried about the paperwork this would require, and Sakura was fuming. Though it was then that he caught the faint sound of breathing as Sasuke forced his head up with the Sharingan flickering. Sasuke-kun, you'll pay, Sakura drew a kanai and lunged at Taizun, who did a quick few hand signs. Would release. Poison Ivy SAP Wall. A wall of sappy plants, to be more specific Poison Ivy, rose from the ground, and caught the annoying pink bug. She yelped. Get me off. Get me off. Get me off. A rock near them shattered from the intense volume. Taizun chuckled, and Kakashi was shocked. How did this guy get wood release, and does that mean Naruto does as well? Taizun forced himself back up, having a brief spasm due to the Chidori before reactivating his storm blade, and approached the prone form of Sasuke. Now, you have to die, and then I hope those two don't damage the fortress, it's a rental, but before he could kill the child a water jutsu flew straight at him, which he barely dodged due to his injury. The ground was now covered in sticky fluid. Water release. Syrup capture field. It was a team of Konoha Shinobi, Kotesu, Azumo and Hayate Gekko, along with a fourth medical ninja he never got the name of before. Kakashi cursed to himself. He was too injured to speak, but now two Chunin and a Tobex Tujanin were about to potentially give the Uchiha more jutsu. Kakashi wouldn't feel worse if Guy beat him in a hairdo contest. You've asked for it. Wind release. Drilling air bullet. Inside the fortress, we now find the two decent genin of Team 7, Naruto and Haku, in a dark hallway. The two were looking around as if expecting problems and they were. Strange. No traps, Naruto mumbled absently, before Haku sighed. Naruto had to be so cute, and dense. Can't one be without the other? Please, don't jinx it, Haku sighed behind him, before she felt her foot sink. Of course, she had to set a trap, as the floor suddenly rose up dramatically, straight towards the ceiling. Haku, Naruto yelled, quickly, Haku jumped off the quickly rising floor, seconds before it pounded into the ceiling. However, she fell. Straight onto Naruto, he yelped in surprise as Haku suddenly was crushing him. Worse yet, he was getting a face full of Hakus. Well, at least they were only B cups, he wouldn't suffocate. Haku looked down at him in surprise. Naruto kun, sorry I didn't mean to. She mumbled with a blush. She got off him, as he scrambled back and blocked his face. Don't hurt me, Haku sighed, she wasn't surprised. The only females he really knew before her to any extent were Yame and Sakura. 
While Ayame probably never gave him any reasons to cower like that, Sakura. Naruto, you know I'm not mad, it was an accident. Mentally she added that she would like to do it again, perhaps farther, but maybe after he was a year or two older, and they were Chunin. Oh, sorry, he chuckled as he slowly unshielded himself. With a blush, he tried to end the awkward moment. Um, well. Dot you have nicer boobs than Sakura does, Haku chuckled. Naruto, Tora probably has better boobs than Pinky does. And the cat was male. With that, the two continued on their way to find Mr. Ostrich. Back to the fight, storm release. Dual blade strike Katrina and Andrew. Dance of the Crescent Moon. With a cough, the two sword-based attacks collided, as Taizun was sent rolling back. The coughing special Jonin landed next to his panting Chunin teammates. Panting, Taizun was running low on chakra, what even someone like him would be a little tired after fighting an A-rank Jonin. Three good Jenin, sadly arrogance didn't take Sasuke's skill away, one of which was a Jinchuriki, one useless one, two Chunin and a special Jonin, with a major injury, unscathed. Not bad guys, this was entertaining. I'm afraid, however, that I must depart now. He used the body flicker technique, wishing he had swift release. The two Chunin turned towards Kakashi. Who was that guy? Their medic nin healed Kakashi so he could speak, and with a cough deeper than Hayate's. I mean, that guy used storm, and even would release, that shouldn't be possible. His name is Taizun. I have no idea who he is, or what he's doing. I can't help but wonder though. He dropped to the ground in exhaustion, despite the medical nin's chakra. Is he working with Orochimaru? That did make sense, Orochimaru was the one to graft wood release into Tenzo, so it wasn't a far stretch. But his concern now was Sasuke, and whatever jutsu he got from the battle. Back inside the, rented, fortress, altar room. Well, this is, creepy, Naruto commented, with a pale Haku nodding in agreement. The castle room they had entered was the basic idea of an evil scientist's lab, there was even a welcome mat saying, lab sweet lab, that they were standing on, and a creepy face on the wall grinning like the Cheshire cat. Oddly, it resembled Naruto's night cap. Okay, this guy's either an insane scientist, or he has a sense of humor, Haku commented softly. Naruto then noticed the cage with Mr. Ostrich inside it. Oh, it's you, a voice said. Naruto jumped in fright, where did the voice come from? IT was then the voice spoke up again, it was Mr. Ostrich. So, the humans have come for me, how quaint. Now, let me out of this cage. Haku gazed at Naruto in a confused manner. They never said he could talk. He shrugged. Well he never did talk before. Haku, who had been gazing around the room, suddenly stopped dead in her tracks. Naruto, those are summoning contracts. Half a dozen brown scrolls littered a nearby table. Naruto cocked his head in confusion. Summoning scrolls, Haku nodded, as they walked over towards them, and opened them. Each of the scrolls had a different animal on them, a penguin, a raccoon, a beetle, a cat, an ox and a squid. A fresh-looking one was next to them, this one with a fresh-looking ostrich on it. Each had several, rather faded names on them, except for the ostrich. Zabuza spent years trying to find one here I had an affinity with, with no luck. The one he did find, the cockroaches, it wasn't pleasant. You see, by signing the contract with your blood, you can summon the animal whose contract you have a contract with from a different plane of existence, or something, where animals can hold human levels of intelligence, Naruto then recalled Kakashi's Ninkan. Like Kakashi's dogs, Haku nodded, exactly, though, this new one, there shouldn't be an ostrich summoning contract. So, is Taizun making new ones? Haku frowned. Perhaps, but to what purpose of, I don't know. It's very difficult to have more than one summon able species, the animals are picky that way, it was then that Taizun appeared in a shimmer. Haku drew a handful of Sanban as Naruto reached for a shuriken. Relax, I'm only a delayed clone, I have no battle abilities. I'm here to say, the ostrich shall be burned alive. Suddenly, a great fire burst forth, forming an impenetrable barrier of fire. This delayed technique, Armageddon Blaze Asterisk will burn your bird alive. He poofed out of existence. Water release. Water ball. A ball of water, like lightning ball, 
formed in Naruto's hands and he sent the ball of liquid straight into the fire, succeeding in nothing. He looked around in desperation. Save me, I will not be served like a chicken. Mr. Ostrich cried out as flames slowly approached his cage. Naruto gained a serious gleam into his eyes as he turned towards Haku. Haku, what are the hand signs for a summoning jutsu? He demanded as he grabbed the new contract. Let's see, boar, dog, monkey, bird and ram, but why are you? Naruto bit his thumb, and quickly wrote his name down on the ostrich contract, barely legible, before doing the hand signs in a rapid and somewhat sloppy fashion. Summoning Jutsu, Mr. Ostrich, a burst of smoke ensured and as it cleared, Haku found Naruto sitting on the now safe ostrich, as if to ride the giant bird. Hey, what just happened? Mr. Ostrich said in confusion. Naruto chuckled. Datbeo, I am Naruto Uzumaki, future Hokage, and first ostrich summoner. Haku chuckled. Naruto-kun, never say that in public. Ostriches didn't exactly strike fear into anyone, though then again, Hanzo was feared for his salamander. Though at least since this ostrich didn't live in its own realm, perhaps that meant he could still sign a regular contract. Well Haku-chan, and my ostrich minion, he was rapidly tossed off by said minion, who glared at him. Do not call me that, ninjin. Naruto was rapidly attacked by the beak of said ostrich until he managed to escape. Ouch, okay ostrich-sama, now let's get you out of here, but wait, we should probably take these other contracts. But Naruto-kun, remember what I said about. I know Haku-chan, but we might as well keep them away from Taizyun. Whatever he's planning, the contracts should be safe with Oji-san. Though the challenge would be to keep them away from the Tem and the Pomeranian, Haku agreed. After all, Sasuke might not want the ostrich contract, but the thought of him summoning giant squid or tigers was alarming. But luckily, she noticed a sealing scroll lying around, and quickly managed to seal the scrolls inside it. Naruto was amazed. Haku-chan, can you teach me how to do that? Haku smiled. It was then that Mr. Ostrich interrupted. Hey you two, if you'd stop preparing to mate. Naruto and Haku blushed in a combination of indignation and embarrassment. Can you get me out of here? And by the way, Naruto, be free to summon me anytime you want. It is always good to get away from the farm. Back in Konoha, with Sasuke, Sakura and Kakashi in the hospital for a few days, Sasuke and Kakashi for injuries and chakra exhaustion, and Sakura for severe allergic reactions. That left Haku and Naruto to deliver the report to the Sandane. He listened intently, before speaking up as he removed his pipe. This is an interesting development. The stockpiling of contracts, while not unheard of, is unusual. Few shinobi can use more than one, and Taizun had six of them, and the ability to craft a seventh for a totally new contract, suggests something. What, Oji-san, he looked grave. Naruto, you know how you have the nine-tailed fox inside of you, he already knew about Haku's knowledge of it from Zabuza. Well, the fox is the strongest of the tailed beasts, of which there are nine. Wait, there are more of them. Naruto said alarmed. The Hokage smiled. Sealed into others like you, in other villages, yes. They are the Aikibi, Nibi, Sanbi, Yanbi, Gobi, Rokubi, Nanabi and Hachabi, and finally the Kayubi. They are a raccoon, a cat, a turtle, a monkey, a dolphin horse. A what? No one really knows. A slug, a beetle, an ox-squid hybrid, and of course, the fox. Now, theory states that it is possible to summon a tailed beast with a contract of its type. For example, I have the monkey contract, and if I put enough time into it, I could possibly summon the yandi, though I'd get its jinchuriki at the present time. The difficulty of that is why few have tried to summon a tailed beast with their contract aside for the fact the creature would try to rip them apart if it was unsealed. Naruto looked alarmed. So, what, if someone had the fox contract, they could summon me? It's a mute point, the fox contract was destroyed long ago, its summoner unable to use it again. And there was only one summon able fox, the Kayubi. There are many monkeys I could summon, many slugs Tsunade could call forth, many turtles made a guy could muster, but no fox summons. So, Taizun was after summoning their Jinchuriki. The Hokage blew into his pipe. Possibly, but seeing as there are no tailed penguins, or ostriches, it is possible he was doing something else entirely. 
But let those thoughts rest, nothing can be obtained from worrying like this. All of you have received pay for this B rank mission, and both of you may keep the contracts you found to your heart's content. But, don't try to sign all six of them, it's bound to end poorly. That and the fact Jiraiya would kill the Hokage when he got back, before the toads rioted and kidnapped Naruto. I will also keep this from the councils, and I recommend keeping that storage scroll with you at all times. The bank has a no scroll policy, and it is possible that if the civilian or elder council hear of this they will demand you hand them over to Sasuke for his use, all of them. Just in case, however, I grant you freedom from such an order. To make it official, he quickly wrote a law and signed it himself. I've already made a call for Soom san and Hiyashi san to sign this bill as well to help make the bill official. With no canine summons, Soom would hold no interest in the contracts, especially the Cat 1, and the Hayuga don't perform jutsu outside of their clan, so Hiyashi had no stake in the contracts. But what they missed was a young ninja outside the window listening into the meeting and dashing off. This ninja was civilian born. OC Jutsu and Bio. Wood release. Poison Ivy SAP wall. Kekai Jenke, C. Description. A wall of poison ivy, coated in tree sap, grows from the ground and traps the foe, leaves foe incredibly itchy and sensitive for days. Delayed clone jutsu. Rank. B. Description. A clone is set to appear in a room like a message for a later date, vanishes after message is given. Genjutsu. Armageddon blaze. Rank. D. Description. Creates an illusion of deadly flames while in reality the flames are harmless, has very overdramatic name. Water release. Water ball. Rank. C. Konoha and Kuo lead the pole, and I think I'll put an omake chapter into the story for kicks at some point soon. Begin. In a dark chamber room, Homura's estate, several days later. Homura, Kaharu and the civilians were fuming. Sasuke and Sakura were finally freed from hospitalization, but then one of their civilian shinobi informants told them that seven summoning contracts were retrieved on the mission, all in the hands of the ice slut and the fox boy. Sasuke and Sakura were seething in fury, and the council was tossing oil onto this fire. After all, how dare the demon and his ice slut take power that should be used by the Uchiha? Sadly, this has always been the case. The story of Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Haruno is a complicated one, or at least, Sasuke's is. Both were born into rich and influential families, the Uchiha were one of the most powerful clans in the world and in charge of the Konoha police, while the Haruno were a merchant family of high regard. While on the Shinobi Council, the Uchiha were the most influential members. As a member of the civilian council, Sozoshi Haruno was a loud activist for civilian rights, and quickly gained support in the civilian and elder side. However, back in this time, the civilians had much less power, because of the Uchiha. As the police of the village, the Uchiha knew the potential danger of many of the laws the civilians wanted to pass. For example, laws like, no ninja may enter a civilian's property without permission, civilians are to have the right of way in the streets would easily impair ninja movement in a crisis, and the many anti-Naruto laws brought forth by Sozoshi Haruno, such as laws against him, using public restrooms, restaurants and entry into the academy itself, were negated because of the Uchiha. Yes, the Uchiha were actually major pro-Naruto activists. Sasuke's mother, Makoto had actively encouraged Sasuke to try to befriend the young Naruto, back when Sasuke was a nice, well-mannered kid. Fugaku personally jailed many attempted attackers and fined a dozen malicious street vendors for unfair treatment, and Itachi was one of the Anbu the Sandame trusted to protect Naruto. Naruto never had any problems shopping in the Uchiha district, they almost treated him like Ichiraku's did. This treatment was logical really. The Uchiha, unlike the civilian council, knew about the nature of sealing, and knew the boy was perfectly human. They also were militarily minded for they knew the military potential of Naruto. They wanted to ensure Naruto's loyalty to the village. This was one of the reasons they planned a coup, to overthrow the civilian council. Itachi, while all for the civilian council's demise knew this plan could easily spell war, something the pacifist was against. That in his stronger loyalty was to the Hokage and the clan heads who would most likely be overthrown as well, spawned the Uchiha clan massacre, with manipulation from Madara, unknown to all but Itachi of course. 
This led to the civilian council gaining more power, with their greatest rival now under puppet control. As a minor, and clan head by default, Sasuke's votes were in the elders' hands, allowing for more of their bills to be passed, and fewer of the shinobi councils. Though they didn't get any chance to force punishment onto Naruto, as Itachi still cared about him, and had threatened the elders who pushed him to slaughter his family that if anything was to happen to Naruto, or Sasuke, including death, banishment, castration or anything else of such nature, he'd reveal Konoha's secrets to the other four great nations. Understandably, the council agreed. This was where the Sasuke problem began. Not only did his family's massacre traumatize him for life, but it also put him in the guardianship of anti-Naruto activists Homura and Kaharu. They told him time and time again, he was not only supposed to despise Naruto for any reason he could, but also fueled his arrogance. He was decent for up to a year under them, still following his parents' examples, but then the fangirl base and the worship the civilian and, Danzo excluded, elder council gave him rotted him to the core. Similarly, Sakura was also spoiled by her mother, and made to believe in anti-Narutoism. She remained a decent person, perhaps because of her friendship with Ino, until Sasuke came into the picture, when things rotted in her soul as well. And they had reason to be arrogant. After all, Sakura was the most intelligent of the Kunoichi, while Sasuke was Rookie of the Year. However, book smarts only got you so far in the line of duty, so Sakura, while she could write strategies, didn't truly have the power to pull them off. Sasuke however was arrogant, and skilled. Combined with his Sharingan, he was a walking time bomb. And that bomb was active. Hiruzen Sama has fallen under that damn brat's grip. He favors him over us, the council. He favors him above our hero, our hope for the future of Konoha, Uchiha Sama. And now that idiot of a Sandame thinks he can just write us off with a bill, eh. Well, let's see how those two can handle confrontation. Mark my words, the blonde terror and his ice whore will be beaten until they never rise against Uchiha Sama again. Sasuke smirked, with his pink lackey behind him. That Dobi's going to get his ass given to him, and those contracts will be mine. For the Uchiha clan exclusively, Kaharu gave a toothy, evil grin. And then, we're invoking the old clan restoration act. The old fool can't hope to argue against it, unless he wants to be charged for treason against the village. With that act Sasuke any female who agrees, or has reason to. Homura chuckled, will be married to you, to rebirth the Uchiha clan. And they had several targets. Haku for one, the ice release will make the Uchiha even more unstoppable than before. Then there's Anko Mitarashi, the council have wanted her dealt with, and she is a strong Kunoichi. Strong Kunoichi, strong children after all. Plans also called for forced agreements involving one or both of Hiyashi Hayuga's daughters and Ino Yamanaka, daughter of Inoichi Yamanaka, as well as Hana Inazuka, Sum, Inazuka's daughter, are also in the making. Those old fools will have no choice but to vote with us unless they want to lose their daughters. Hell, we'd take them anyway after the big vote. Imagine it, a new Uchiha clan, with Sakura's brains, the ice sluts Kekai Genke, Enko's strength, the Yamanaka Jutsu, the Inazuka senses, and perhaps even a combination of both the Byakugan and the Sharingan. Sasuke was grinning evilly. Yes, I can see it now in myself as the Hokage and my brother dead. Sozoshi Haruno then yelled loudly. But remember, my daughter only goes to you once you become a chunin, that's the marriage law we passed for shinobi. All in the hope that they'd be able to keep Naruto a genin forever. Don't worry, all he has to do is get to the finals, and we'll make him a chunin, regardless of anything. He's definitely more deserving, than the brat. Sadly, they didn't get a chance to call Naruto what they wanted. The Hokage's law was actually a large jutsu, use of a violating phrase would be detected by the Sandame immediately, and Anbu would swarm in here in seconds. But then again, in a few hours, the demon will get knocked around a lot by their champion. Konoha Streets, Ichiraku Ramen, one miso ramen, with a pork ramen on the side please. Oh, and a miso for Haku as well. Naruto ordered from his favorite, and truth be told, only eatery, Ichiraku Ramen. The two chefs here, Chuki and his daughter Ayame, smiled and warmly took Naruto's order. They both cared for him quite a lot, not only as a person, but as 50% of their annual income. 
In fact, Naruto paid for their TV, phone, internet and the rent on both their shop and their house each month. Gotcha, Naruto-kun, Ayame chuckled. Haku had an anime-styled vein on her forehead. She turned towards Naruto in a very slow, very creepy manner. Naruto-kun, he gulped. Why? Dot yes, she grinned and broke the creepy facade. It's nice to see you have people who care about you in the village. Haku had a sense of humor, living with Naruto you had too, and add in her training with Zabuza, and you have a potent combination. Of course, she wasn't living with Naruto the way she'd like to, not in the same bed. He slept on the couch, he insisted. Chivalry, in small doses was always a fine trait in boyfriends after all. Here you go. The two were given their orders, and Tyuki decided to have some fun. So, is this a date? He chuckled, to a fit of blushing. No, it's just we heard we might get another long distance mission, so I need to get a good meal in the both of us first. They both of them had packs for the trip as well, though it wasn't as if Naruto really had anything to bring, or worth anything for that matter, aside for his cloths, his night hat, wallet and ninja tools. Haku carried similar things, aside for the weird night hats and in addition, the ceiling scroll holding the contracts. But just as they finished off their ramen, a loud voice rang out behind them. Momoichi Haku, Uzumaki Naruto. They turned around to find Sasuke and Sakura behind them, with smug grins, with the civilian council behind them, all with evil grins. Tem, what's with the party here? Have to go and do a group duck emo ritual. Naruto smirked. Haku chuckled before the younger Haruno yelled out. Baka, be more respectful to Sasuke-kun. He is your superior. Lay off you transsexual Pomeranian, Haku growled. We are all genin, our ranks are equal. I'm the head of the Uchiha. And how many Uchiha does that make? Face it Tem, you're no more a clan head than I am. Dobi, I demand you give me those scrolls. Haku raised an eyebrow slowly. Scrolls, what scrolls? Technically, she was right, they only had one scroll that held the multiple scrolls. The summoning scrolls, give them to Sasuke-kun. No, even if we had them, no. Naruto smirked defiantly. The civilians on the council decided to chip their much over-speculated two cents into this fight. Uchiha-sama has the support of the council. And where is the shinobi council? Bah, they don't count. And the elders, Naruto was having fun tearing them apart. They, are busy, correcting your teacher's mistakes. Screams were flying through the air, and it sounded faintly like, my I-C-H-A-I-C-H-A. -C -H -A -I -C -H -A. Really, I'd think you council members would understand the rules. All three councils have to vote on an issue before such demands like yours are made. Chuki smirked. The council then turned on them. For that, Chuki Baka, that shack of yours is going to be closed down, with our authority. Yes, and might I add you can do that, because I am a civilian. But you can't, order around shinobi like Naruto kun or Haku chan. Chuki said confidently, Naruto and the Sandame would keep his business afloat, and if not all their non Naruto customers' funds went into his and Ayame's nest egg. They had enough to live well enough for at least a decade without working. The council was furious. That fool wasn't just going to be driven out of business, but into prison. As the last of the Uchiha, I have the authority of the Konoha police. Hand over the contracts, or you're going to be arrested, Dobi. Your idiot friend behind the bar there is already going to the big house for his insubordination. This was another reason why Homura and Kaharu took such interest in Sasuke, and molded him into their puppet, he had control of the police by blood, and its authority. Once he restarted the Uchiha and got his blood in the officers, they'd be unopposed. However, Tem, you're no police shinobi, your Uchiha police force is long gone. Naruto smirked. That ticked off Sasuke for the last time. Dobi, that's it you're getting it now, Sakura restrained the old man. Fire style. Phoenix sage fire technique. Hundreds of small fire sparks flew straight at Naruto and Haku as his pink-haired minion went to capture the civilian. Ice release. Ice dome. A dome of ice formed around the two genin, blocking the fire jutsu. Water release. Water ball. A ball of water formed in Naruto's hand, before he sent it straight at Sasuke. The ball hit him and sent him sprawling into the dirt. Pushing himself up, the council was yelling. 
You attacked the last Uchiha, you're getting it now, boy. Shadow Clone Jutsu Naruto created a dozen shadow clones and charged at Sasuke. He glared bloody murder at them. Fang passing Fang, Sasuke jumped into the air, and began spinning, turning into a sharp vortex of claws. This vortex struck the clones, destroying them. And seeing this from the view of the Hokage's crystal ball was Sum Inazuka, Shikaku Nara and the Sandame, who were furious. That, that, piece of cat crap stole my clan jutsu. Sum was fuming. You could almost see the steam coming out of her ears. Next to her, her large one-eyed canine companion Kuromaru was growling. Shikaku was annoyed as well. That troublesome boy must have been spying on your son's training, and used his Sharingan. Sadly, there is no law to use on him. He stole hidden jutsu, troublesome woman, but the fact remains there was never a law on it, it was more of a moral rule thing. And that boy has no morals. That was it for Soom, as she burst through the window with Kuromaru close behind. Shikaku shook his head. I'd stop her, but it'd be too troublesome. I just hope Inoichi-san can get Kakashi-san out of his jam. URG, I'll go summon the rest, it's troublesome but those three are going to get in trouble if they attack the Uchiha or the council for that matter. Agreed. The Hokage nodded. Serutobi-sama, I believe another option may be necessary. These fights are growing too frequent. Danzo hobbled into the room via cane. Shikaku blinked. Wait, you're not assaulting Kakashi-san. Danzo huffed. Shikaku-san, I don't care much for either him, or our little whiskered friend, but the fact is, both of them are important assets to Konoha's security, the one thing we agree on old friend. Sarutobi blew into his pipe in agreement. Team 7 is falling apart. Uchiha and Haruno aren't compatible with Uzumaki or Momoichi, so I suggest we split the team up. Serutobi was surprised. Danzo-san, we don't have any spare genin, and genin teams may only go into the upcoming chunin exams with three. The civilians and my old teammates will have a cow if Sasuke is bared, and I won't allow Naruto or Haku to be barred either. Danzo smiled. That's why I have a two-part plan. First Haruno and Uchiha are placed on a team with my young ward. He stood aside to allow a strange pale boy with a black mid-drift t-shirt, Anbu pants and a creepy fake smile walked out and bowed. Sandame Sama, it is a pleasure to meet you. This is my ward, Sai. The Sandame eyed the child with dark curiosity. Strange, I have never met this one, or seen him. He isn't a root. Hokage Sama, I dissolved my group years ago. Danzo lied. And as for Uzumaki and Haku, he stepped aside to allow another man to enter. He had a blue shirt, an armored right shoulder and white pants. He had brown hair and on his head was the high aid for Takigakur. Greetings, Hokage Dono. The Sandame was confused. Shibuki Dono. The man smiled. I have a recommendation to help you with your problem, my cousin Fu, Jinchiriki of the Nanabi. The Hokage's office. The Sandame blinked. Out of nowhere the leader of perhaps the most paranoid of all ninja villages, offering up their own Jinchiriki, and his cousin at that. The Sandame had been told for ages that anything too good to be true, wasn't true. Did it matter if it was him winning the Land of Earth's Lottery, or Free Ika Ika for the next five volumes, these offers were always fake, or had a catch to them. Shibuki Dono, may I ask, why are you offering to give up this Fu, your cousin and your village's Jinchiriki? I believe you are aware of our own Jinchiriki. Yes, Naruto Uzumaki. Quote dot dot dot. Correct, and despite the wishes of the civilian council, I've tried to make his life as good as possible. Like finding the most trustworthy banker to protect his account and trust funds from Jiraiya, as well as to guard his parents' old funds, and helping Naruto gain a rather decent apartment. Of course, it would be easier to just cut the civilian and elder councils off the equation but it was an old law dating back to the days of the Shodai, that the civilians were to have a say in the village government. Of course, the only ones who got into power were the ones who wanted to control the ninja for their own agendas. Shibuki sighed, Sandame Dono, I wish this wasn't true, but compared to your Jinchiriki, Fu has lived a horrible life. Aside from me and my father, no one in the village cares about her. Everyone knows what she has sealed within her, unlike what you've done here, and can't look past it. My father, and later myself, had to privately tutor ourselves for her to even get the training of one of your academy students. 
She can't even go out for a walk without being verbally and even at times physically abused. Heck, probably the only reason she hasn't been raped is because the people are afraid she'd reproduce. He was shaking in anger. I just want to see her happy, and she won't be happy in Takigakur. A village leader should really hold his emotions in greater control. Danzo muttered. At the same time, we can use this as a show of trust. We show our trust to you by sending over the person who can potentially become Taki's greatest kunoichi, and you can send something to us of equal value. Um, I can't ask you to take the Uchiha, can I? No. Oh, worth a try. The Sandame blew on his pipe. Speaking of, we need to figure out some sort of punishment that bypasses the laws of the civilian and elder councils as a way to punish that fool for his behavior. I believe both of us are in agreement that the Uchiha should not be made a chunin. Danzo commented. The Hokage nodded. Troublesome, I agree with that point. Shikaku shrugged. We could use that option. The Sandame was referring to making it public the Uchiha's plans and removing Itachi's missing nin status. While risky, this could make it so Itachi would be the new Uchiha head, and the votes would be rebalanced again. That won't work, the troublesome council will twist that into their advantage. Shikaku sighed. For instance, they could say that the Uchiha were manipulated by residual demon energy or some other crap like that, and deal away with Naruto. They were crafty that way. You could just give Naruto his house. Shibuki suggested. The Sandane thought about it for a minute, before he turned towards Shikaku, who was grinning. Or, better yet, the entire Uchiha district. Back to the brawl. Konoha streets. Sakura lay on the ground, Uchiha fans flying around her head. Tsuki, with a frying pan in hand, sighed. You know, I swear ninja standards are dropping daily. Ayame, back in the day, you could find academy students in their second year with better reaction time than this lump of pink mush. Sadly, only Tsuki was having any luck in the fight. As it was, while Sakura and Sasuke were both spoiled brats, Sasuke was a skilled spoiled brat, and his guardians the elder bats had found their way here, as if they didn't have enough problems already. Ice release. Ice spikes. Haku sent spikes of sharp ice straight at Sasuke in an attempt to maim him. He laughed. Fire release. Dragon fire jutsu. A dragon made of flames was spewed out of Sasuke's mouth, and quickly melted the ice, before flying straight at Haku. Storm release. Great twister. Naruto jumped in between Haku and Sasuke, taking the blaze into the twister. Sasuke stared wide-eyed at the now flaming vortex. Storm release. Flaming twister. A flaming vortex slammed into Sasuke, sending him crashing to the ground. The council behind him began yelling insults. How dare you strike a clan heir? Freak. You should give those jutsu to Uchiha-sama. You are all idiots. Naruto yelled as the twister dissolved and he landed on the ground. Even if that so-called sama of yours was any good, he can't copy any of mine or Haku's jutsu. The council just got angrier. Then change that, and why should we listen to you inbred fat bastards anyway? This shouting match continued until one of the dumber, fatter merchants yelled out. How dare you oppose our will you, 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 demon. Naruto's eyes twitched, as did Haku's, Chuki's and Ayame's. While Sakura was out cold and couldn't hear that comment, Sasuke did. Huh, what's this about the Dobi and demons? The council member was about to answer that, until he felt a sharp pain on his back, and collapsed to the ground. Hidden shadow snake hand. The man had been bitten in the back by a dozen poisonous snakes, which retreated into the arm of a rather ticked-off kunoichi, with purple hair, blandish brown eyes, a brown overcoat and some sort of mesh suit. Sasuke for some reason shivered at the sight of her. Oh great, it's her. Homura grumbled. It was Anko Midarashi, the student of Orochimaru, known by many names, the Dango Serpent Mistress, the number one hyperactive knucklehead Kunoichi, and the Kunoichi most likely to kill someone with a glare. And she was not amused. Okay, what the hell is going on here? Breaking the laws, attacking civilians and ninja, looks like I have to drag you all to interrogation. Sasuke shivered, he didn't have fond memories of that place. Get out of here, Mitarashi. This is justice for Aruchiha sama being denied scrolls that should be his. Kaharu yelled. Sakura's mom decided to add. This is a civilian matter as well, so be gone snake whore. 
That ticked her off. Snake. Whore. Summoning Jutsu. Anko. Now seriously angry, summoned a giant black, yellow striped snake the width of an average pickup truck. The council fled for their lives, pursued by the large snake. Anko laughed. Those idiots, it's just a harmless giant gardener snake. Well, that's them, now then Uchiha kun. He shivered at the tone, it was disturbing. Give me a reason why I shouldn't show you that trick of mine involving Fluffy the tabby and the stick of butter again. Once, Sasuke had been to interrogation and saw Anko at work there. Ever since, he was terrified of any of her overkill ways of torture. That particular torture was too horrible to think about. Because, I am rescuing powerful artifacts from an enemy Kunoichi and some sort of demon. Anko smiled evilly. Wrong answer kid. Fire release. Fire snakes. Anko breathed in deeply, before unleashing two snakes made of fire straight as Sasuke. The snakes lunged. Water release. Syrup capture field. A wave of sticky water flew from Sasuke's mouth, trapping the fire snakes in some sort of glue. They cried out before smoking out. Damn. Anko growled before avoiding a drop kick from the bastard, before giving him a side kick, to find the boy flickering out. It was the basic clone jutsu. Thanks for the trick, by the way snake whore, fire release, fire snakes. A single fire snake flew from Sasuke's mouth and struck Anko, knocking her into the sticky trap. This singed through her net clothing, luckily not anything major, but her stomach was no longer covered. Sasuke smirked, loving how this village had all sorts of strong and attractive kunoichi that would be used to revive his clan. Ice release. Ice spikes. Sasuke's gloating ended only seconds before he got impaled, the water from his own jutsu freezing into the attack. Fire release. Great fireball jutsu. Lightning release. Thunderball jutsu. The two attacks from Naruto and Sasuke collided in the air, releasing an explosion. Sasuke was briefly distracted by the explosion, before Naruto came up from behind him and gave him a kick to the ass. Sasuke flew into the air from the intensity, before he turned around. Fire release. Phoenix Sage fire technique. Dozens of small fires flew at Naruto from below. He was impaled, before poofing. It was a shadow clone. Dobi, I will have that jutsu if nothing else. Um, don't think so, lightning release, 1000 years of pain. Sasuke suddenly felt violated as Naruto performed Kakashi's joke jutsu, but with a slight twist. An electric charge had been added. With a yelp that could scare a dragon, Sasuke was catapulted into the air and fell to the ground twitching with electric chakra. Chuki was laughing, as the poor boy was rubbing his ass and forcing himself up. Dobi, you violated me. Hey, it's an actual technique in the data books, another patented Naruto jutsu. I'll sell scrolls of these, oh just imagine, that an ice release. Naruto, I am not. What, for all I know Taizun and thus me might have it. Good point. Naruto laughed, before he found himself frozen, as did Haku. I, can't, move. Both his and Haku's shadows were connected to Sasuke's, who was up and grinning. Dobes, you can't hope to beat me. That Shitamaru may be a worthless ass, as is his entire clan, but this shadow possession is going to be fun. He activated a Chidori. Now, die Dobi. He ran at Naruto, charging the jutsu as both Haku and Naruto were forced to run towards him due to the shadow possession. Though before he could kill them with it, two things happened, first, he felt a sharp strike to his back, like some sort of reinforced poke. Second, something bit his leg, a snake, Sasuke's justice broke, as he collapsed to the ground. Haku and Naruto sighed in relief, it was then they got a chance to see their saviors. One was obvious, the snake had come from the escaped Anko. The other was a blue-haired, pale-eyed girl who was glaring at Sasuke with a look of fury that could give Ibiki chills. Hanada-san, Naruto said shocked, she smiled nervously, before poking her fingers together. Oh, hey, Naruto-kun, Haku had seen this girl around before, almost stalking Naruto. And while it was nice to see that at least one girl in this town didn't worship Duck Head, having competition for her Naruto-kun was annoying. How dare you hit me with your filthy Hayuga hands and your disgusting snakes, you whores. You are impeding justice on the Dobi. All four of the figures still upturned and glared at him. 
Now, normally you could find mice that were more vicious than Hinata, being that she was probably the nicest and shyest of the Kunoichi. Arguably, she could probably get swamped with date requests if she didn't wear that jacket of hers. However, some things easily ticked her off. The first thing would be someone eating her cinnamon buns. Another would be asking if she was a boy. But the worst thing you could do near her was insult Naruto. After all, ever hear the saying, hell have no wrath like a woman scorned. And with Soom on the scene now, growling, that made four scorned women. So, you think you can steal hidden jutsu, E.H. Shrimp? Soom picked up the Uchiha by the scruff and held him up to her eyesight. Sasuke then did perhaps the dumbest thing he could have possibly done. Put me down you imbred mutt. Don't you have a bitch to fuck or something? Apparently, Sasuke thought this was Kiba's dad. For that mistake, he was sent flying into a wall that promptly collapsed. The gathered females, meanwhile, cracked their knuckles. What happened next was a beating so terrifying, I can't describe it with words. Thus, Naruto decided he would never, ever, ever tick off a girl, ever. A day later, Hokage's office, with Sakura out with a concussion, and Sasuke still in the ER of a civilian hospital, the only one that would take him. We find Naruto, Haku, Hanada, Hiyashi, Sum, Shikaku, Enko and Tyuki in the office of the Hokage. Because of what had happened, and the still annoyed council, Sum had offered to let Naruto and Haku stay the night at her place. Terrified of upsetting her, they agreed. The old man blew on his pipe, before beginning. This is a disaster. The entire town has divided. Now everyone either hates you, or worships the ground you walk on. The conspirators are in hiding. Both the civilian and elder councils have been barred from gathering until a month after the upcoming Chunin exams and while the law protects you from having to pay for the life you took, Anko-san, please don't do it again. I've gotten over a dozen letters demanding your removal just for that incident. The special John and grinned. Only twelve. That's a little low. Soon found herself respecting this woman even more. And while Kakashi is no longer being tortured, the poor guy is going to need some therapy to recover. Monies from both Kaharu's and Homura's estates have been moved to his account as damages. And now, for the Uchiha's punishment, which is the reason why I've called you all here. While the civilian and elder council think they have covered all their bases, such as his ninja rank, the Chunin exams and his Sharingan, I've managed to grab several mute points. First and foremost, the Uchiha funds in the bank are no more, all paid off as damages to the Nara, Inazuka, Uzumaki, and Momoichi accounts as sizable amounts. The rest of it is being held in a new account in case he has stolen any other clan jutsu. Next, the assets of the Uchiha have been liquidated to you all. While the police powers are still with the civilians, their proxy vote control of the Uchiha seats have been removed, and replaced with a seat for the head of the Hyuga branch family. Hiyashi nodded, while not gleaming with happiness, inside he was pleased. Now the branch family had a say in their fate, in a way that the elders of his clan couldn't stop. After all, influencing a council vote by way of controlling seals was punishable by death. And the former Uchiha district is now in the possession of Naruto Uzumaki. This was the shocker. Everyone looked at him in shock and surprise. What, Naruto-kun? Most of Sasuke's aggressive actions has been against you and Haku-san, and because of a little law they placed, a shinobi from another village who hasn't been in Konoha for at least a year can't own property. At the same time, the civilian council hates you, so this is the perfect way to tick them off. Guess that's true, but wait, what about Ichiraku's? The Sandame sighed. Sadly, I'm unable to stop them from demolishing it, also. Oh yeah, Tsuki-sama. How'd you like to open Ichiraku's in my new part of town? Chuki was wide-eyed. Naruto-kun, you'd do that. How much? For free of course. Chuki hugged the boy in glee. This boy could probably pay for all his expenses from his ramen habits anyway. The Sandame smiled. Only Naruto would be that generous. Wait, does that mean I'm Sasuke Tem's landlord? No, he's kicked out of his house, and well. Dot you were as well. The civilians foreclosed your place, Naruto gulped. They did what? Haku was thankful they still had their stuff. But don't worry, we already are preparing a place for you three to stay. Now everyone was looking confused. 3. 
Why of course, your new teammate is going to live with you too. You are to escort Shibuki Dono, head of Takigaker, to meet her and bring her here, as part of your new team with her and Haku. Naruto had his mouth wide open, and Haku and Hinata were mentally thinking, oh great, a new rival. OC Techniques, Storm Release, Flaming Twister, Kekai Genke A. Description, the user uses Great Twister and absorbs a fire release technique, creating a firestorm. Fire Release, Fire Snakes, Rank, B. Description, two snakes made of fire are spawned of fire and sent at a foe. Those who've seen Order of the Phoenix's duel between Voldemort and Dumbledore have an idea what this looks like. Lightning Release, 1000 Years of Pain, Rank, C. Konoha, Training Ground 3 the next day. The third training ground, where the failure of a team, the original Team 7, had their first test. A test which got our beloved orange-wearing ninja tied to a post. But instead of finding either Kakashi, who was currently getting therapy, Naruto, who had just left with Shibuki and Haku to find Fu, or the team of Sasuke, Sakura and Sai. As Sasuke was still in the Ur, Sakura was in hysterics after hearing what had happened to the Uchiha fortunes and now the council was drawing up some sort of save the Uchiha fund, and Sai, no one had any idea where he was. Instead, this training ground found itself in the presence of the much more stable Team 8, Hinata Hayuga, the tall, mysterious shade wearing Shino Aburame in the fur jacket, wild-looking Kiba Inazuka, and his small white puppy Akamaru. They were waiting for their Jonin sensei, the strange dressing, odd-eyed Karenia Yuhi. Strange things are stirring, Shino commented to break the silence. Kiba smirked. Hell yeah they are Shino-san, and I fail to see the problem with any of them. Sasuke is dirt poor and in the hospital, we finally have enough money for a pool, and with Team 7 all messed up, I doubt we'll have to worry about them in the Chunin exams, Hinata looked away, and Kiba quickly edited what he said. I mean, Sasuke Tem and Sakura-san, are probably not going to be in the Chunin exams, now most people would think that Kiba was a womanizer, based off his dog-like looks and behavior. That was far from the case. His mother was one of the most terrifying Kanoichi in the village, purpose the entire shinobi world. There's a reason his dad ran for the hills, and it may have involved a dress, a tomato and pack mentality. In addition, he was one of Naruto's old friends, dating back to before he even met Akamaru. Because of that, he was probably one of the reasons that Naruto didn't end up like the Jinchuriki of Suna, as in an insane bloodthirsty maniac, in addition to people like Uruka, the Sandiame, Choji and Shikamaru. That, and he was one of the few people to ever see, and survive against an enraged Hinata, when Akamaru ate Hinata's last cinnamon bun. The poor puppy was nearly neutered before Hinata calmed down, apologized, and cried her eyes out. Oh, that's okay, Kiba-san. She smiled nervously, poking her fingers together. Kiba had a devious smirk. While he knew quite well not to enrage Hinata, teasing her about her feelings, provided he didn't insult Naruto of course. So, I hear you have some competition, E.H. Hinata-chan. She looked at him in surprise nervously. I mean, I can tell you like Naruto-san, I can smell it. But the thing is, I can smell Haku-san has feelings for him just the same as you do, and knowing Naruto, I bet that the new teammate he's gone off to get will like him too, if she's female. Wonder if you'll be able to snag yourself your little crush, Hanada was blushing. Kiba-san, she was looking glum again. Kiba sighed. Hanada-chan, I was kidding, oh that came out wrong. Obviously, Shino-san, if you're such an expert, you fix it. Shino just stared in his creepy fashion. Kiba-san, I am not an expert on females, unless they are insects. You got yourself into this mess, it's your job to fix it, Kiba glared, before trying a different approach. Hanada-chan, the best way to make sure you get Naruto, just be yourself, talk to him. Dot and I guess if you beat Haku in the Chunin exams that might help, Hanada looked as though she was getting an idea. A rush of leaves then alerted them to the arrival of Kurenai. Kurenai-sensei, Hanada asked nervously. The Genjutsu queen smiled. Yes, Hanada-chan. Um, well, dot you know, how um, Naruto-kun, has those water release, and lightning, release, could you, um, teach me some of those, dot too. Meanwhile in Taki, 
Hero's Water Chamber. The hidden chamber of the hero's water, one of the world's most powerful substances. Taken from an ancient tree that dates back to before the time of the ninja villages once every 100 years, this water is enriched with chakra to a point a single sip can give the drinker the power equal to opening two chakra gates, the water is why Taki has never been invaded successfully. However, the water also cuts the user's lifespan by how much one drinks. A sip takes a year, a gulp takes five, and the entire container would kill anyone. This water was highly sought after, so defending it is Shibuki's most sacred duty. And with him gone, the duty was currently on another, his cousin Fu. Well, she wasn't told to defend it, but the minute Shibuki left, a few of the dumber shinobi tried to break in, so she was hiding out here. No one but Shibuki knew she had any idea where the water was, or where it was at all for that matter. Fu had tan skin, and mint green hair, with orange eyes. She wore a short white midriff shirt, with the bottom edged with fishnet armor. A tacky high eight was on her arm, the opposite side Shikimaru wore it on, though to her the only reason she wore the thing was because she was loyal to Shibuki, and not the dumb fucks in the village. Also on her arms were white armlets. She was wearing a similar pair of shorts to her shirt, with a red cylinder container leaning up against the wall that belonged to her. As of now, she had her eyes closed, as if trying to take a break, when out of nowhere, loud splashes were heard, waking her up. Out of nowhere, three teenagers with ugly brown potato sack-like clothing and odd water mask things on their mouths. Their headbands had the symbol of a megaker, the village hidden in the rain. Fu stood up immediately, glaring at the strange people. Who the hell are you clowns? Fu demanded. The fools glared at her. We are Team Obero. Give us the hero's water and we'll allow you to live. Our god wishes to have it, Fu grinned. A god, really, do you actually believe in that trash? Trust me boys, if gods did exist, let's just say I wouldn't be this dump of a village's scapegoat. However, this hero's water is the property of Shibuki-sama, so buzz off, before I stick those stupid respirators of yours up your asses. The ugly aim Jenin glared. I was hoping you'd say that, water style. Water Wyvern Bullet. A small water dragon rose from the water port they had come from and flew straight at Fu, who grinned. You see, Jinchuriki abolites often were dependent on the tailed beast inside of them. For example, Roshi, the Jinchuriki of the Yonbi, or four tailed monkey, gained lava release from his beast, Gara of the desert gained sand and wind abolites from the Aikibi, Shukaku, and Killer Bee gained the ability to spit out ink from the Hachib or the giant ox squid thing. Fu's beast was the Sandbee, the seven-tailed horned beetle. And while the beast wasn't a lava-launching monkey or a sand-controlling raccoon, it did have one thing. Massive strength. Fu jumped Eno the air and smashed into the beast, causing it to disintegrate from the impact. The three rain genin panicked. What is she, Tsunade of the Sanin? One of them said in amazement, before he felt a kick to the nuts that sent him flying into the wall. Water release. Tornado of water. A maelstorm of water surrounded Fu, that smashed into the second and third genin, knocking the three into the walls. In fear, the genin jumped into the water and swam away. She stretched her arms and sighed. That wasn't even a little bit entertaining. Kill them. Shut it you oversized bug. The seal that Fu had, while nowhere as weak as Gara's, wasn't as powerful as Naruto's either. The seven tails could still speak to her, and it got really annoying. You're too soft. They attacked you, they die. So what? They attack the village, not my problem. More splashes were heard as Fu turned and to her surprise saw dozens of rain ninja emerge into the chamber. And leading them was a black-haired, creepy man. Sui and San. Ah, if it isn't the insect. Funny finding you here, planning on grabbing the hero's water yourself. Can't say I blame you. Both you and I can agree this group of huts isn't worth much, though I can't understand why a freak like you would stay here. Fu growled. This is Shibuki-sama's home, and while I don't care a damn for the village, I'm not going to abandon him, Suiyan laughed. Oh, you care about shibuki kun -eh. The coward isn't good for anything except as a figurehead. Now hand over the hero's water, and when the villagers blame you for its theft, I'll give you a day's head start. Fu grinned evilly before closing her eyes. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not happening today. Suddenly, a red bubbling sound could be heard as a red aura surrounded Fu. 
It took the rough shape of a horn beetle, a giant horn of red chakra adorning Fu's head. One wing-like portrusion poked out of the chakra from her back. Opening her eyes, Fu's eyes were now golden yellow. Unlike Naruto, Fu had received some training in how to control her powers from Shibuki's dad. Because of it, she could control one tail of her full power, and use it. What the hell is she? And then, all hell broke loose as he was smashed by arm of painful red chakra. Meanwhile in the fox's seal, the fox sniffed the air, and it picked up a familiar scent. The Nanbi's chakra, the oversized vixen smirked, it appeared the Nanbi had a host who'd use her power. Why didn't she have a Jinchuriki who'd use her power? Perhaps it was that additional seal. The seal, while holding from her host what the fox could smell ate more Keke Jenke for now, also seemed to be doing something else. The seal was slowly returning her yin chakra, the chakra that the Yandiame, who she had a picture of now alongside the Shodai's that she found, had sealed within himself. This was slowly increasing both her own, and Naruto's power. The seal also was binding the traits to the boy's genetic structures. The traits could also be passed, should the boy ever get the brains to choose a mate. Wait, if the boy got married, did that make the QB a lesbian? URG, once she got out, she'd need to raise a small country. Whoever this Taizun was, he seemed to be a master of seals, and only one clan was that skilled with seals. The Uzumaki, Taizun might be a remnant of the old clan. Back to actual reality, the traveling trio of Shibuki, Naruto and Haku found themselves in a village under attack. Hundreds of AIM ninja were actively attacking. This was to native of war. You guys, you need to protect the hero's water, go. Shibuki ordered. Naruto and Haku were aghast. But, these ninja are swarming all over the place, you guys are being overwhelmed. Shibuki sighed. The ninja attacking are AIM ninja from the land of rain. As it is, it appears there will be war Bedouin AIM and Taki. If you guys participate, that will only draw Konoha into the war. I don't want to be known in history as the man who led to the fourth shinobi world war. Fu must be with the hero's water, it's hidden under the tree, go. The two genin, begrudgingly ran for it. Shibuki glared at the invading aim ninja. Water release, water dragon bullet. A giant dragon made of water swamped the battlefield, blowing away several rain nin. So, this is the leader of this hut infested dump, E.H. The commander turned to find that a hundred rain ninja had surrounded him. Where they all were coming from, Shibuki had no idea, before he saw their commander. The commander had striking orange hair, with ringed, purple eyes, and multiple body piercings. He wore a strange necklace, that looked somehow familiar. It was, the diva path of pain. The aim ninja bowed before the being. Our god. Shibuki had a sweat drop. God, the figure fixed a look at Shibuki. I have come for your Jinchuriki and the hero's water. Give them up, and we leave. He was about to continue before a trashed fruit stand's apple suddenly rose up and split into pieces, before flying at the diva path. With a strange jutsu, the apples were restrained and collapsed as if crushed. So, better than the apple shuriken, EH diva, wind release, drilling air bullet. A harsh blast of wind flew from above and struck into the surrounding rain ninja, killing some while blowing the rest away. Jumping down following the air bullet, was Taizun. Who are you, and how did you get into this village? Shibuki demanded, Taizun smirked under his haunted disguise. The same as they did, you know you should improve your security, perhaps get yourselves a giant squid or sea serpent or something. These guys all have air apparatuses for breathing underwater and this guy doesn't even have to breath, he glared at the diva path. But, seeing as though we both have a common foe in this guy's group, we might as well take care of him. Water release, water bullet. And so the battle began. Meanwhile on the lake, Haku and Naruto dashed towards the lake, as a massive explosion flew from the lake. A girl with green hair and tanned skin was blasted out from below, before crashing and floating on the water, too exhausted to move. A man with spiky black hair and a blue aura rose up from the same place as well, WTIH a jug of clear water in his hands. So, you little insect, that was pretty impressive of you. That power of yours is definitely something, taking out those rain ninja, but luckily the last one happened to have a chakra cancelling seal, no. 
Now without your bug's help, you're squashed. The man flew at the girl with an intent to kill, as the girl forced herself up as if to try to defend. Ice release. Ice manacles. The man found himself restrained by ice. Fu stared in shock, why would these strangers help her? Lightning release. Thunder ball. Naruto formed a ball of lightning in his hands before sending it straight at the man, who had just broke out of the cuffs. The attack sent him flying back as the two-leaf genin ran to the downed Jinchurki. You okay? Naruto asked, before the girl forced herself up, before collapsing back down. She cursed, that seal may have been removed, but her chakra was still destabilized. However, I'm fine, she obviously lied, with a tone colder than Haku's ice release. Though, from what Shibuki had said, that was kind of expected. The man however wasn't done. So, helping the little monster, E.H. Well, prepare to find out what happens to demon lovers. Takidaker secret water release, water sword. A sword of water formed in the mon's hand as he flew at terrifying speeds. Oh no you don't, water release, great breakthrough. Ice release, S-E-N-B-O-N shower. A giant wave and hundreds of ice needles flew straight at the man, who broke through them like they were nothing. What, genjutsu, paralysis, Haku and Naruto yelped as they lost feeling in their limbs. Die, he flew and swiped his sword, in aim at the still defenseless Fu. She stared in horror, like a deer in headlights, waiting for the blow that never came. Because Naruto had forced himself in the way of the attack, overpowering the Genjustu, but now having a water sword sticking out of his gut. Naruto-kun, Haku gasped, Fu was stunned, this complete stranger took a mortal blow for her. Humped, kid that was stupid, but be glad to say you died today by the hand of the mighty Suiyan. The man laughed, until he noticed that Naruto was glowing orange. He was shocked, as was Fu. He's, just like me. That chakra, it's, the K-Y-U-B-B-I. While inside the seal, another of the links on the seal glowed, before revealing a new kanji, aura. While outside, the wound was healing, while a ball of blue chakra was forming in Naruto's hand, a mixture of the spiritual yin chakra Taizun seal had been slowly returning, and the yang chakra of the nine-tailed fox. The ball slowly turned into a full blue sphere. What sort of jutsu? Aura release. Aura sphere. Naruto sent the blue ball of chakra flying at Suiyan, who was sent flying across the link, skipping on it like a tossed stone, before he stabilized. You, demon brats, Fu, Haku and Naruto forced themselves up to prepare for battle. OC ninja techniques. Water style. Water wyvern bullet. Rank. B. Description. A weaker version of the water dragon bullet. Aura release. Aura sphere. Keke Jenke A. And to the new pole. Naruto leads with 9 votes. Fu, Haku and Samui follow with 8. Then Shikimaru and Gara with 5. Tamari at 4. Lee and Koritsuchi with. Hanada. Tenten and Karui with 2. And Ino with 1. The rest are all goosigs. Zeros. This chapters. Hits the floor. And begins now. You fools think you're a match for me. I have the hero's water, I am invincible. Suiyan flew at the genin with amazing speed. Ice release, protective ice dome. Haku formed a dome of ice around the team, which Suiyan collided into. The impact shook the lake shore, sending ripples cascading from the impact zone. The ice was caked in cracks, but Suiyan had been forced back. Haku panted, that took a lot of chakra to hold. Aura release, aura sphere. Naruto charged up another sphere of powerful chakra, before sending it straight at Suiyan. His aura flared up, as the attack was held back by the chakra shroud. With a roar, Suiyan jumped into the sky, flying the brats with an intent to destroy. Water release, water dragon bullet. A water dragon roared up from the lake and flew straight at the three genin. The blast impacted them, sending them skipping across the lake shore, until they exploded into smoke. Shadow clones. Suiyan gasped before getting smacked harshly from behind by an enraged Fu, before crashing into the lake, the hero's water jug falling into the hands of Naruto and Haku. Fu landed next to them with a grin. Hey, that was actually good teamwork, Naruto and Haku grinned. I think this is a start to a great partnership, eh. However, in a surge of chakra Suiyan forced himself back up from below the water's surface. 
I am not done with you fools yet. Naruto did a few rapid hand signs. Summoning Jutsu. In a flash of smoke Mr. Ostrich appeared. Oddly, he was standing on the water, like a ninja. You little human, why do you summon me all the way out here? The bird demanded. Fu seemed confused by the talking ostrich. Naruto gave Mr. Ostrich the hero's water. I need you to take this water and get to safety, Mr. Ostrich glared. A game of hide and go seek, E.H. boy. Well, it's either this or I get more ribbons on my neck, so shadow clone jutsu. A dozen ostriches formed next to the original before scattering. All the ninja here seemed disturbed. Did he just? I think he did. That is one strong bird. Sweean thought, I should capture it, the ice girl, and these jinchurki. I'd bet I could find a good price for them. Water release. Water tornado. Storm release. Great twister. Naruto and Sweean collided with both of their tornado-like jutsu. Meanwhile, most of the aim shinobi had fled, as the diva path continued its fight against Taizun and Shubiki. The problem with the paths, other than their obsessive amounts of piercings, creepy eyes and the amount of chakra they require from their controller, is the fact that they work the best as a full team. It appeared as though only the diva path was present here, as if their master didn't expect too much resistance. That, was a mistake. Normally, the Atatsuki work in partners, but oddly the partner of the diva's path controller, Kanan, wasn't present. Perhaps she was back in aim, or again Taki might have been underestimated. Or perhaps, it wasn't Taki that they underestimated, but the unexpected arrival of Taizun. Shinra Tenshi. A orb of gravity stopped a fire bullet and water dragon jutsu straight from Taizun and Shibuki from striking the path of pain, though the path seemed to be quickly weakening. That thing, is unreal, Shibuki panted, running low on chakra. Taizun was faring better. Hard to believe there are six of them. Let's be glad only one appears to be here. Six of them. Who are you, and how do you know this? The diva path demanded. Taizun smirked. I am Taizun Uzumaki, the wanderer, the remnant, the seal sage, the scroll master. As to how I know about your tricks, Nagato, wielder of the Rinnegan, descendant of the same clan as myself and our lovely blonde haired Jinchurki friend, that is for me to know and you to find out. Wind release, violent wave palm. Wind release, hurricane gust. The two wind releases collided releasing a massive explosion that flattened a few nearby huts. The diva path used the explosion to get behind Shibuki, who turned around rapidly. Fire release, dragon flame jutsu. Water release, weight dragon bullet. The two elemental dragons collided, but the fire dragon Somoha overwhelmed the water one, and crashed into Shibuki, who was sent flying into a stall of fish and fell out conscious. Taizun smiled. Truly amazing that much chakra force in a jutsu. Makes me wish I had the Rinnegan, what Naruto could do with it, lightning release, wave palm. A lightning version of beast wave palm flew from Taizun's hand towards the path. Fire release, great fireball technique. The two techniques collided with a vengeance. Diva and Taizun gave one another a stare down. You're good, Taizun Uzumaki. Do you wish? Um, no I'm not joining your little cult. I have, issues, serious issues, with the whole murdering Jinchurki concept, and I don't trust, two certain members of your group especially. Diva glared. Why do you fight us then? We will bring peace by pain. You caught the pain part, right? The fact is, I believe there is another way to bring forth peace, and I've already made the first plays on that notion. Naruto-kun, shall be the one to bring peace, and revive our clan, Diva looked confused. Why not yourself? The truth of the matter, is there are reasons I can't. Moral for one thing, and at the same time, aura release, aura sphere. A blast of aura was sent at the path. Shinra Teshi. A orb of gravity blocked the sphere before it was sent back and with it destroyed a cabbage cart. Is that I can't pass tricks like that, but with my seal, Naruto-kun can. He, unlike me, needs that power to do what must be done. Quote. I see. So. You stand in our way. Well, Taizun Uzumaki, you shall meet your end by the hands of the six paths of pain. Until next time, the path teleported away. Taizun had an anime sweat drop. Cliche much. He turned around to observe the battle with Suiyan. He smiled. Show me your power, Naruto-kun, 
Haku Chan, Fu Chan. These Suiyan, water release, explosion. Air exploded from under Suiyan, sending him into the air. This guy just wouldn't give up, it was infuriating. Lightning release, thunder ball. Naruto sent a ball of electricity flying at Suiyan, who used his aura to reflect it once more, before he was forced to reflect a dozen shuriken from Fu. Water release, wave impact. Suiyan crashed down onto the water's surface, sending hundreds of waves streaming towards Fu, Haku and Naruto. The genin jumped out of the way to avoid the impact, before they got their chance, the aura around Suiyan was starting the fade. Wind release, frost wind. From Haku's mouth a frigid wind filled with ice crystals was blown towards Suiyan with high speed. Aura release, aura sphere, the blue sphere was tossed into the attack as well. Fu tossed a group of shurikens into the mixture, before letting out. Shadow Shuriken Jutsu The shuriken mudliplied into thousands that surrounded and impacted into Suen, as the other attacks hit, sending him spiraling to the lake. We did it! Naruto cheered as the trio landed on the water's surface, before his eyes widened, as did Fu's and Haku's. Suen dissolved down into water, it was a water clone. Good, but not good enough, water prison Jutsu. With a yelp, the trio were trapped in a water sphere. Suiyan was grinning evilly. So it ends, you fought well, but prepare to die. He smirked, as did Haku, before she dissolved into water. Suiyan was shocked. A water clone. Naruto and Fu were grinning now. Ice release. Demonic ice mirrors. Two mirrors of ice formed around Suiyan. Haku didn't have enough chakra left to use any more of it. As reflections of her appeared in both, Suiyan was flabbergasted. How are you doing that? Ice release. Sanban shower. Hundreds of ice Sanban flew from Haku's mirrors as she teleported rapidly, impaling themselves into Suiyan, breaking his control of the water prison, allowing Fu and Naruto to escape, and with a breath of air they were revigorated. Let's end this, Shadow Clone Jutsu. Naruto created five Shadow Clones, before nodding towards Fu. She got the message, and jumped into the air. What the? 1. The original Naruto kicked Suiyan into the air. 2. A shadow clone headbutted him farther. 3. Another gave him a harsh blow to the stomach. 4. 5. Two combined themselves for an extreme punch. 6. The last of the clones held onto Suiyan's limbs, now Fu San. 7. Fu gave Suiyan the mother of all drop kicks, sending him crashing towards the water at mad speed. Now Haku. Gotcha. Haku cancelled the mirrors, before using ice release to freeze the surface of the lake into a solid ice block. Suiyan and the shadow clone holding him collided into the thick ice, the shadow clone exploded into smoke while Suiyan went limp. Haku collapsed to the water, her chakra was almost gone, and even Fu and Naruto felt drained, but they did it. With Naruto holding her up, they limped back to shore. On the shore, Taizun was smiling. Well done, time skip. Hey. What are you doing here? Dot dot exclamation mark quote. Naruto demanded. Taizun just shrugged. Shibuki was back up and running, though he was unhappy. Because villagers had caught wind of the fact that the diva path had came for their jinchurki, they had unanimously voted for her banishment, though Shibuki was able to redefine it into a transfer to Konoha, in exchange for funds to help rebuild, funds from the former Uchiha accounts for sure. Now that the hero's water was safe once again, plans were being made for its increased protection. Hey, I saved Shibuki Dono's life, lay off me would ya? He did, Fu was smiling. Thank you, Taizun san for protecting my cousin. I am in your debt, Naruto and Haku gave her a look. Fu san this guy is a missing nin, who attacked us for no reason. To give you the keke Jenke, remember, stole Mr. Ostrich. I was testing you, caused the Tem to gain the all those jutsu from the Chunin, as well as the Chidori. Now Taizun was looking abashed. Hey, that was a mistake, I admit that. What, I'm not perfect. Okay then, what do you want anyway? Taizun chuckled. To stop him. Who, who him? Taizun reached for a storage scroll in his pocket. You're find out in time. But, Shibuki Dono, you really need to improve your water side security, might I suggest? he began pulling out, more summoning scrolls from his ceiling scroll. More of them, Haku said shocked. Taizun smiled. You could say I'm a collector of ancient, 
lost summoning scrolls, and a creator of new ones. Let's see, chinchilla, no, he tossed the scroll, with a glance, into Naruto's confused hands, gibbon, no, another scroll, rabbit, nah. The scroll landed upright, spun and then collapsed neatly, squirrel, that's just nuts. The pun came with another tossed scroll, flamingo, possibly, he gave a look towards the lake, no, that wouldn't do, I know I have something workable in here, he tossed the scroll to Naruto again. Hey, what's with, road runner, no, another tossed scroll to the Jinchuriki, prayer dog, this one landed a perfect 10 inches mackerel, might be good for cutting a tree, but there's salt water, so, more for Naruto, dodo, dot na, do I have to say it, hum, Loch Ness monster, um shibuki, you guys do a lot of fishing, right? Shibuki looked a little baffled, in fact they all were. Um, yes, hum, then that wouldn't do, another scroll was given to Naruto, now then, ah beaver, that should do it, he tossed the scroll at the confused village leader. Nature's builders, I'm sure their work wonders here, Shibuki looked at the scroll like it was sacred treasure. And you're just, giving me this. Taizun chuckled. Of course, I have a lot of them, and one man can't use a thousand contracts, so why not give some out? Oh Naruto you can keep those, he looked shocked. Huh, you're just giving me, quite so. You see, I have reason to see the Uzumaki revived to their former glory. And artifacts like that are perfect for showing a strong clan. The Sarotobi are famous for their monkey summons, the Sabaku clan of Suna are infamous for their weasel summon, and I can see you having quite a few children, so a few contracts to go around doesn't hurt, no. Oh, while I'm at it, he tossed Naruto one more contract, have a Tuatara contract. A Tuafuta, Taizun chuckled before vanishing in a swirl of leaves. The nearby ninja sweat dropped. What an odd fellow, Shibuki commented, but, at least he seems to be on our side. You'd best be on your way home, to Fu Chan's new home that is, he smiled. Fu had tears in her eyes. Bye, Shibuki-san, Shibuku smiled sadly. Don't worry, you'll be able to see me again one day. Dot and I'm sure Naruto-kun will make you happy, Naruto blushed as Haku fumed. Fu had an evil grin, before grabbing Naruto's arm. Of course he will, after all, Naruto-kun's mine, Naruto seemed surprised, and Haku was fuming. Kun, Haku grabbed his other arm. No way, Naruto-kun's mine. Mine, mine, mine. Shibuki laughed at Naruto's curse slash good fortune. Depending on how you looked at it. Meanwhile in Konoha, from out of nowhere, a bright light filled a isolated clearing in the forest. The light was coursing with colors, green, blue and reds. In Kumo, listen up brokage, I can see the music of Chunin in my students, and I'm wanting to see them promoted. But the exams ain't fallen here for a year, but now they're falling in Konoha, so I was wondering, two massively tall and muscled men, one with seven swords on his back, shades and a tattoo of a bullhorn on his face, the other in robes like the Hokage, but yellow instead of red with a different kanji, were in a meeting. The other man sighed. B, you know quite well that we don't have the best relations with Konoha. The Hayuga alone would be ferocious with them. Don't sweat it bro. The bee got it covered, the rakage sighed. That's why I'm sweating. Okay, what if I send, someone else with them? Yugido chan perhaps. But bro, what's the worst that could happen? The cage glared at his brother, the Hachabi Jinchuriki. Do I even have to answer that? In Suna, a boy with red hair, and a strange gourd on his back was star ng up at the moon from up top a building. The black rings around his eyes and his glare made him appear like the manifestation of terror. Soon mother, I will give you, tasty forine blood. OC techniques and what they do. Lightning release. Wave palm. Rank. B. Description. Electric version of beast wave palm. Water release. Wave impact. Rank. B. Description. You smash into a body of water, sending harsh ripples of liquid cascading towards your opponent. Wind release, frost wind. Rank, C. Description, a barrage of frosty wind is blown straight towards the foe. Formation, Fukutu. No rank, the end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.